nice to play someone that represents the authentic uh, British black voice mm -hmm. now to a lot of my friends growing up. And uh, someone that's got a bit of swagger and intelligence that's also got a similar uh, relationship to Will in terms of street smart, but book smart. And now he's here in LA with his, one of his best friends, Philip. So Jeffrey, what are we gonna do about Will? Will needs more than a few days to find his footing around here. Here we go. Hey, Jeffrey. Looking good as ever. I'm just trying to keep up with you. Hey, yo, Jeffrey got some game. Cheers. Cheers. You know what I love about this show? It's not just like one trope of a black person. Like, it's not just the rich black folk. No, it's everything. You know, it's a full it's, spectrum it's of the, the black full, culture, it the black totally, experience. Yeah, for yeah. sure. It's like the A side is joy, the B exactly. side is pain mm -hmm. together. It's there, just so There's something for, for everyone. Yeah. Everyone can relate to it in some way. You know, this, uh, you know, exactly. It's both sides of the coin are represented very, very well. And this okay. show, <laughs> the music is really seems really yeah. important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How important it's a character is the music? It is a character in the show as much as the characters are a character. Uh, it tell it helps tell the story, and it really creates, you know, that the world that that we're you in. You can feel and, the music you know, in your chest. Feel it, yeah. These yeah. choices. It's, even it's, in the in the original viral trailer, yeah. when Will shows up to Bel Air, he's wearing a free Meek Mill yeah. Yeah, shirt. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I love that. Oh, yeah. yeah, he's wearing right. a free Meek, right. Meek, right. Meek, Meek right. shirt. Meek. And like, I love that the trailer like. You put you know, Meek, Meek in is it. so Philly. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, Morgan Cooper. Explain. Yeah. So for folks who don't know, explain the, ge the, the genesis of this show that came out of a, a reimagined trailer that, that Mr. Cooper came up with. Yeah, 2019, yeah. he put this trailer out and, um, you know, got like 7 million views. A game wheel. Look at you. Look at you. Yeah, he made it with it was, his own money. This man said money. he was driving down the street one day yeah. and he goes under the overpass and he said like he had this Went astrological yeah. event is what he calls it, where he just had this flash just of like in. this entire concept of the show. And yep. then this man makes the thing out of his own pocket. And then I just heard, am I crazy? Then I heard when he released this trailer with his own money, he made sure he was in Los Angeles when he released it. So like, and I think Will Smith called him up on the first day yeah. when it yeah. hit. Yeah, because Will knew. called him when it was at only 10,000 yeah. views. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's like he's such a manifesto. Yeah, Woman's really about is. the work, though. He's about the art. He's an you artist. He's so he was making yeah. that regardless. He's, he's mm. made loads of short films and he's done, you know, commercials. So when you look at that original trailer, you know, when I first saw it, I thought that was the show. Same. I was yeah. like, well, Same. I'm not going to get a role in that show. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, this right, is right, And I saw it and I was like, I was like, this is genius. This is brilliant. I was like, wow. Yeah, of course this is going to work. But before I saw it, I was like, this is the most trash idea I've ever heard. Did you really? No, no, honestly, what? same. Oh, same. Oh, about that? 100. Me and yeah, Ali no, both same, yeah. were yeah. like, why would someone redo yeah. The Fresh Prince? It's per it took me probably a year before I ever watched it, because I was like, there's no reason to watch it. Oh, see, really? It didn't take me a year. I remember I, I had seen it on Twitter, and I was like, ah, that sounds dumb, whatever. And it kept coming up, and I'm That's like, exactly fine, right. you've twisted my arm, exactly. I'll watch it. And then I think I Duh. watched it like three times in a row on repeat, and I just kept watching over and over, see, and I was for like, me, I was so wrong. Uh, me, it was different. So wrong. For me, it's the only way you could do it. You know, you, the only way you could do uh, Bel Air is make it as a drama. Uh, yeah. the, the original is, is mm -hmm. so iconic and so amazing. Can't touch it. Yeah. You got to leave that alone. It was lightning in a bottle. Is that, is that the reason, in a sense, because you couldn't possibly ever match what no. that genre is? Why would you? Well, yeah. well, and, 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 and the world's changed so much. The world now. has changed exactly so much, and I think that this story is so relevant and is so important uh, in this time right now. We need a positive. Uh, healthy story mm -hmm. for yeah. you know black story and we, know, in order for a truth this is us with some swag in there, okay? yeah. But, yeah. You know, yeah and like yeah. in, in, in the show and we're having like discussions on actual things that are going on right now right now so yeah. much of will and Carlton's mm -hmm. conflict from the very beginning is just is 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 things that people people are arguing about on Twitter people are arguing about in person yeah, um, yeah and I think it's really really cool that as a show you know the showrunners have allowed the show to reflect the culture that it exists in today. And right. so we're providing a lot of answers for question, to, mm -hmm. to questions that people have out there right now. So. And, it's, and, and it's starting conversation, and that's the biggest thing, too, oh, just yeah. to have the conversation. Yeah. You know I mean? These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now.
We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. How much are, on, on the set, you guys like singing a lot? Is there oh, a lot? Gosh, oh, yeah. 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 You want some right now? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, we got yeah. a piano yeah. on set, set too. Okay. 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 But we ain't got a piano, but we can do this. Little yeah. Acapella. 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 <laughs> uh, wait, 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 a lot. <laughs> <laughs> there is a lot of that's things. A that's, a that's a wrap. That's Honestly, a wrap. We call I, her Cassie Freestyle on set because yeah. she always she busts it. I don't want Cassie Freestyle. Oh, she's hot. Okay, so come on. Yeah, no, that's 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 the new freestyle. You want to do the freestyle? Wait, wait, we should do the freestyle. Okay. Oh my lord. Okay. Okay. Keep it a thing. Okay, but I'm going for the thing. Okay. Turn my headphones up. Yo, we're here on the Today Show, that's for show. Sure. We're hanging with my friends, Al and Roka. Uh, I'm next to my friend, Adrian Akira. Uh, 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 so many never love. Seen, uh, never, hey. never seen a rap like this. Yeah, with the green dress and a fit. Yeah, long braid and she's swinging it. Hey. Yeah, yeah, we killing it. Oh. Hey. Um, I can't freestyle. Uh. So I'm gonna do it me style. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. This is getting tough. All right, but it's not that rough. Okay. Jabari, sure. I'm gonna pass it on. All on Jimmy you. Jerry, Take beat. it. Go for it. Who's oh. gonna do the beat for me? I'm gonna come do this and just do me. I don't do this for free. If you want me, then you gotta pay me. I bring the fire like Hades. Oh. Let me get back that last style. Ah. You gonna use this and use it. Don't abuse it. You better just choose it. My oh. man. Oh. Hey. That's really my pal. About to freestyle. Oh. We go wild. 24 hours. And we got the power, but we not on stars. Oh. Oh. Welcome to a Thursday edition of Popstar Plus. Coming up on the show today, a great visit for our My Happy Place series. This time, Melissa Joan Hart shows us all around her family's home in Nashville. Of course, you know Melissa from the 90s hits. Clarissa explains it all. And, of course, Sabrina. And there's a lot of fun memorabilia, as you can imagine, in her home. So we'll have that coming up in a little bit. But first, let's check out today's Popstar. First up, Bridgerton. First. Following news, the show has broken Netflix streaming records. Yet again, Netflix has announced plans to expand the Bridgerton universe. On Wednesday, the streaming service revealing a prequel series is in the works. The new show is set to focus on the life of young Queen Charlotte and her marriage to King George. Newcomer 
India Armartifio is going to, excuse me, I hope I got that right, will take on the role, role, but fans will recognize a few familiar faces. All three actresses currently playing oh. Queen Charlotte, Lady Danbury, and Lady Bridgerton are set to reprise their characters. Oh. Executive producer and writer Sh Shonda Rhimes is teasing fans on social media writing, prepare for the Queen's oh, return. Good. Mm. No good. word yet on when this series is set to premiere. Okay. All right, speaking of prequels, next up is Game of Thrones. Right. Cue the music. We've got details about the highly anticipated prequel series here. It's called House of Dragon. HBO announcing that the first episode is set to premiere August 21st. Wow. Okay. So you're going to have to wait about four months before you dive back into Westeros. In the meantime, you can check out the sneak peek of the cast. The upcoming series is set 200 years before Game of Thrones and will center around the Civil War with the House of Targaryen. This marks the first spin-off series from Game of Thrones since the hit series wrapped in 2019. Next up, Katy Perry, the pop singer, is diving into old Hollywood for her next project. Perry is going to lend her voice to narrate a new podcast about the life and career of Elizabeth Taylor. The 10-part series called Elizabeth the First is going to explore Taylor's record-breaking Hollywood deal for the movie Cleopatra, her White Diamond's perfume empire, and the decision to go public about her battles with alcoholism and drug abuse. Katy Perry will also executive produce the series that is set to feature some of the uh, stories from people's closest to the Hollywood icon. There is no release date yet for that one. That's interesting. And next up, Eric Church, the country superstar, under fire after canceling an upcoming concert in San Antonio. The backlash comes after ticket holders for this Saturday's show received an email informing them that Eric Church is canceling so that instead he can watch the UNC Duke Final Four basketball game. What? Fans game. sharing oh, Church's on. message online that reads in part, this is the most selfish thing I've ever asked the choir to do, to give up your Saturday night plans with us so that I can have this moment with my family and sports community. Thanks for letting me go here and be a part of the Tar Heels. Fans sharing their frustrations online, calling the move not cool and embarrassing. Church has not announced any plans to reschedule the San Antonio I don't know how many show. tickets he's going to be selling in San Antonio if he does. Wow. That's, 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 it's a big game, though. Oh, it's a huge game. That's a big game. But yeah. that big. That's a big crowd. Yeah. By the way, yeah. big crowd yeah, you can have a little show. phone on, on stage and keep an eye right. on Right, yeah, it. you can have the game yeah. on yeah. in a monitor. Come on. I'm with you. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Wow. Uh, and finally, we're calling our viewers to help us out with this last one. Today, we're going to launch our first ever pop star what? poll. Oh. It's a poll here, everybody. Oh. Don't get too excited. Is there a bracket? We, it's a poll. <laughs> okay. oh, there's bracket. Right underneath bracket, excitement is yeah. poll. Okay. okay. So we mentioned a little earlier this weekend that Bridgerton, they broke all the records on Netflix. Fans watching 193 million hours of the show in the first three days. We just want to know what's the popular opinion here. When a new show does come out, uh, do you is it better to binge the entire show all at once, or do you more or less like to take your time as to sort of savor it, maybe watch it a little more episodically? Yeah, I take my time. Yeah. I don't want to. Depends on the what, show. Depends on the kind, yeah. of, kind of show. I would too. like to vote for C, which is like maybe watch one or two. Yes. But not binge watch the whole thing, but don't just watch well, one. And we also don't have middle. I, I think binge is yeah. like two to six episodes all in one sitting. It's uh -huh. a binge. You know, and then like maybe one or one or two would be just more I episodic. I think three right? is a binge. Maybe three and three. more. Okay, like that's one or two. Depending one or on two. Yeah. Is, <laughs> that's what I like. But if a series is suspenseful, yeah. sometimes I find myself at the end of yeah. one episode. You want to look the Well, I'm watching Snowfall right now on FX. It's a great show. And like I watch it so fast that I go through it and I'm bummed because it's gone. Exactly. It's like you eat your ice cream. This is like, a good oh, poll. Yeah. This is a good day. Yeah. 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 Like we'll see how it. Just go to today.com and let us know how you feel. We're going to re reveal those riveting results tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. 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 bracket person. the results. Yeah. And here's just a few more headlines for you. We'll start with Shawn Mendes. Overnight, the pop star releasing his latest single, When You're Gone. And of course, with a new song comes a new music video. Take a peek. I don't want to know what it's like when you're gone for good. You're slipping through my fingertips. That is When You're Gone from Shawn Mendes. It's the first new release of this year. His last album, Wonder, by the way, debuted at number one on the Billboard in 2020. All right, and finally, Laura Dern. On Wednesday, the Oscar winner sat down with Ellen DeGeneres to chat about her big return to the Jurassic Park franchise. Dern revealing that onset technology has really come a long way since Steven Spielberg first introduced his dinosaur world 30 years ago. ILM designed computer-generated imagery that we hadn't seen in a movie before. So we had no idea what they were doing. I mean, we were staring at a X on a piece of paper in a tree. 
we had to look at the sound of a roar for the first time, the cast. It's one of the opening scenes of the movie. And they said action. And just as we're supposed to respond to the dinosaur, everyone looked a different way because there was no sound. So we said, Stephen, can you please help us? We have to be able to look at the same time. He was like, oh, yeah, 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 I've got this, I've got this. Action. And over a megaphone, Stephen goes, roar! <laughs> and we were like, this is going to be a disaster. <laughs> and we can't wait to see Laura reunite with Sam Neill and Jeff Goldblum in Jurassic World Dominion. That is out later this year. And those are your Pop Start Plus headlines today. Coming up next, Melissa Joan Hart gives us a little tour of her beautiful home in Nashville. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. If I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. It's the little moments that are the transforming moments. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh, I could apply that. I want to stop for a second. <laughs> In season two, I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon. And by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it what's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Welcome back. Melissa Joan Hart is the latest guest for our My Happy Place series, where we showcase stars for their, at their happiest, of course, their homes. And in the 90s, Melissa was the star of both Clarissa Explains It All and Sabrina, the Teenage Witch. She was nice enough to walk us through her family's home and even showed off some really cool memorabilia from her beloved projects. Hey, welcome to my house in Nashville. Come on in, I'll give you a little tour. Hey, I'm Melissa Joan Hart, and we're at my home in Nashville, and this is my happy place. This is our fun little courtyard. My husband is very proud of the fountain right now because it's finally not overflowing. It usually splatters out and he's been working very hard on a rock moss combination to keep the water in. But I just love this because it's a nice, pretty, like just the sound of it is so relaxing. And I just, it feels like a little Italian courtyard, which is fun because we got married in Italy. We love Italy. So come on in. So we fell in love with this house because it's really unique. <sighs> All right, so this is my home. There's church lights and church doors, but mixed with like modern light fixtures, and which kind of helps explain my obsession with like travel and experiences, and like it just pulls all of it in and just feels very right to me. The pillars are from India. The ceiling is from a barn in Alabama. So if you look really high by the chandelier, you'll see a blue balloon. Someone brought us a balloon and it got loose, and there's no way to get down from there. I'm not going up there. So this is the main kitchen table. This is where we spend almost all of our meals, unless we sit outside, really, or on a special occasion in my dining room. I am very strict about our house being as green and eco-friendly as possible, so you'll find real napkins on the table instead of paper, and you'll find us composting and things like that. So, um, But there is something I want to show you that um, has to do with my career. It's been 25 years since I've done some magic, so let's see if this works. Ready? <clears throat> Here we are in what I call my office, and it's mainly full of memorabilia of my years of work. Up here we have the side of a bus. I was on Sabrina the Teenage Witch, and then I have my movie posters, God's Not Dead, and Drive Me Crazy, which were the two movies I starred in. Well, this is real convincing. I'm a walking punchline. But who gets the last laugh? 
See you after school, hun. For being on that movie for three months in Utah while also shooting Sabrina simultaneously in LA. I was in LA during the weekdays, I was in Utah on the weekends and through night shoots. I didn't have a day off for 42 days and on Sundays I wouldn't sleep. So I would go two days without sleeping except for on an airplane for two hours. And so that really holds a special place in my heart that I made it through that, worked with Adrian Grenier, like we worked really well together and had such fun, but at the same time I feel like we created something I was really proud of. And then here's a bunch of my magazine covers. 1999. These were kind of all from the same year, which is what's crazy. Like I did bikini, this photo shoot, and this photo shoot all at the same, and I think that around the same exact time. I was on Saturday Night Live uh, for a sketch with um, Billy Crystal, and this was the cover of the playbill I did when I did the play Imagining Brad, which kind of rolled into everything, starting with Clarissa. And here's my Northern Bathroom Tissue commercial. My face used to be on the cover of the toilet paper. I've been in this business for 41 years. I started when I was four doing television commercials. So this propeller back here was from an airplane that broke off during my very first directing of Sabrina. So it's signed by the whole crew. They signed it for me and gave it to me. This was made for me by the uh, art department on Clarissa. Here's my Wheel of Fortune. I want a million dollars, what? Um, the Golden Spatula, if you ever saw my show No Good Nick on Netflix, you'll know what the Golden Spatula is about. Uh, I got the bracelets from when I did Dancing with the Stars. And then here is part of my face from the Sabrina episode, the season finale. I think it was called I Fall to Pieces was the episode name. She turns into cement and then crumbles into pieces. And so I kept a piece of my face. So I think we already knew we were coming back for the next season. So we shot the scenes side by side. So when I was on, on Melissa and Joey, I stole this bee. It sat on the desk. This is the actual card that, um, that Pat holds when you don't know what you got inside. This is my name tag. And uh, it's just the card he holds when you're playing the final round. And then when he opens it up, he finds out. Brand muffins. That's it. You got it. <laughs> Would your charity, could they use one million dollars? And I had Vanna and Pat sign it for me, so uh, this is a special little thing. This is, this is my newest piece in the collection, and it goes right in the middle. So when you go to a set, you sit in your chair, it usually has your name on it, or the character's name. So this is my collection of chair backs. Everything from, well, this is from my fake fiance. My character's name is Jennifer. I think that's what that's from. Sabrina, next to you used to be Drive Me Crazy is what that became. It was called Next to You. Nine Dead, that's from Clarissa. And then directing Watch Her in the Woods and Melissa and Joey. And we've got more with Melissa Joan Hart coming up, including a look at one very magical room. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. If I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. It's the little moments that are the transforming moments. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh, I could apply that. I want to stop for a second. <laughs> In season two, I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. We will meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter, in this closet. Well, I took shelter, right in this closet, right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing?
Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. And we're back here on Popstar Plus, continuing our My Happy Place visit, this time with Melissa Joan Hart. And we're picking up with something pretty cool that her son has. I'll just tell you, it's an awesome bed loft. All right, so this is special. This is our quarantine project. Our family made this. My husband went to Home Depot, got a lot of wood, and we painted it, and we built our son a bed loft thing. He loves Godzilla and King Kong, as you can see by the drapery behind. And this is his new little hangout. We do a lot of reading up in the bed here, and so we actually kind of hide some of the books over here, if you can see on the shelf up here, so that we can reach them through the window. <laughs> so right now we're reading Shel Silverstein's um, Where the Sidewalk Ends, and so I can just grab it and climb in there and uh, read to him and then put it right back on the bookshelf out here. So it's kind of nice. And it's kind of nice in there because there's LED lights and glow-in-the-dark stars. We made it. Made it pretty cush. So this area is the library. This bookshelf is so big, it doesn't just hold our books, it holds all of my memorabilia, which is a lot. Um, I have up here a wedding shelf. So this is my bouquet from my wedding. And then these are the cake toppers because we had a little mess up with our cake. So I ran to the museum and bought these little knickknacks and they sat on top of our cake. And then we have all kinds of fun stuff. Like here is a picture that hung on my, um, my childhood bathroom wall, and me and my siblings fought over it, but I got it. I won it. Um, so this hung on our wall for many, many years, and my brother just bought the chi our childhood house from my dad, so my brother let me have it. Mm -hmm. Although I have to make copies for everybody else. <laughs> and then each kid has their own shelf area. It's with their little footstep, and their little sonogram picture, or ultrasound picture, and their little julep cups. And here's my sugar collection when I was little. I used to collect sugar packets from all over the world. <laughs> I like to collect everything from shot glasses to salt and pepper shakers to memorabilia from travels. And uh, this house gives me a place to really showcase it all. So there's like tapestries I bought in Italy and there's a whole shelf here just for travels. And then I've got my family shelf, which includes a lot of my favorite pictures of my grandmother who is very dear to me. So here's my grandma Joan and my uh, grandpa Stanley. So here they are, this is one of their first dates. And this is me with them when I was like one year old. Here's me with my grandparents, including my Grandma Ethel, um, Grandma Hart, when uh, I was getting my communion, making my communion. And here's a beautiful picture of my nanny, Joan. So my middle name is Joan because of my Grandma Joan, and I think that's why I, I just travel, you know, I tried to hit every place from Stonehenge to that um, hookah came from Bahrain, and I went over there for a USO tour, and um, just so many memories of her traveling, and it just made me want to travel. And then you can see that picture up there is of me on the set of Sabrina, and my little sister had just been born, Samantha, who's now like 26. And so that's a scene when I was Rapunzel, and I'm just holding her on set, and the set photographer happened to be there that day, and captured that moment, so that was really nice. We've got things like statue here from Italy, one of my favorite statues, because I studied a little bit in Italy, and then we shot Sabrina Goes to Rome, because I really wanted to go back to Italy, and then I got married in Italy, so I have a real fascination with Italy. And then the kids' artwork I can just display here, which is so fun. They have all their books out here if they need to find something. So this is truly a library. <laughs> Still coming up, Melissa explains it all when it comes to the details behind her staircase and master bedroom. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. I think you're gonna be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. If I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. It's the little moments that are the transforming moments. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh, I could apply that. I want to stop for a second. <laughs> season two. I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. 
rioters bang down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Welcome back. We're in the middle of our My Happy Place trip to Nashville and the home of actress Melissa Joan Hart. She was nice enough to let us join her and take a walk through. We're going to pick up on the tour now. Uh, well, it's her home's rustic staircase. See what you think. <laughs> This staircase I love because our designer, Brandon White, did an amazing job on this because I just love that it's like white painted wood and, and this gray painted wood, but then it's like this rustic natural wood and then a sanded wood and then there's carpeting and there's tile and there's tile on the walls and there's beautiful light fixtures. It just kind of summarizes the whole house. All right, so we're heading towards the master bedroom. We have some special stuff here, just wedding photos and baby photos, but here is our Picasso gallery, so some of my favorite Picassos are in this hallway. And then we're heading towards the bedroom. Come on in. So when I was about 23, I went to San Francisco to meet Shirley Temple, and that's where I made my first purchase of a Picasso. I had been doing the show Sabrina for a little while, and I really wanted something to display that would be worth more later on. And from there, it sort of spawned a collection of artwork. So whenever I get a big job or a new project, I buy myself a piece of art. Things like Rembrandt and Salvador Dali. Degas, and so I have some beautiful artwork on the wall that I'm very proud of. So, here's where the magic happens. Just kidding, don't tell my husband I said that. Above the bed is a paper mache, moon kissing the sun. It's from Venice, Italy. My husband and I were pregnant. We were on our anniversary trip in Italy, and we're running to the train. We're gonna be late, and I see this paper mache shop, and I see this sitting on the sidewalk, and I just had to have it. And so, because I knew I wanted to hang it above the nursery, so above the crib. So all three of my boys slept underneath, and then when they outgrew their crib, we got to inherit it above our bed. So there it is. Here is my treasure chest. This is some fun stuff. It, holds some of my jewelry and some of my favorite childhood things or special things. Like when you ask what would someone take out of their house in a fire, this is the thing I would take. This is a music box that my grandmother played for me and my sisters when we would sleep over in, at her house. And it is super special to me. My sister learned how to play this song for my wedding day. So I walked down the aisle to this song. But come on, we gotta see the closet. I do keep it this neat. I like to, I'm a very big purse person, not so much a shoe girl, love my purses. So one of the problems with this closet is it doesn't have enough room for all my cowboy boots that I got on my Mistletoe Montana movie. So I got to ride horses and I had to wear a ton of cowboy boots. I got to keep them so if I ride again, I have nowhere to put them. So I have to make some space. But I also wanna show you some special stuff. Here are some hats from Clarissa Explains It All. My girlfriend Michelle worked on Clarissa and as I was leaving Connecticut and moving here, she gave me these hats and said, these are from Clarissa. So I don't know if you recognize them, but here they are. And they get their own special little shelf. Funny story behind this heart necklace. My husband had sent me uh, flowers for Valentine's Day when we weren't together, and this came on the vase, and it was kind of cheesy. And so I just kind of stuck it in a jewelry box, but my sister-in-law does the wardrobe on my movies, and she found this heart and decided to put me in it for most of the movies. And then I want to show you guys something really cool. When we bought the house, it was like this already. But I love it. Look at my bathroom. It's so cool, right? It's, it's, we call it the pink bathroom, obviously. We have Dolly. I did not realize what a powerhouse she is, so now I'm obsessed. So here she is, hanging above our throne. Over here is uh, a blue vase from my 40th birthday. So uh, I had this big dinner party. I had blue vases all the way down with white flowers coming out of the top. So yeah, was, I, I kept one so I can always remember my 40th. And then we've got just some uh, really cool geode sink. I love some of the sinks in this house are really special and different. And uh, but yeah, this is um, this is a good little place to come do your business. 
So this is my happy place. This is my dining room, probably the most feminine room I've ever had in my life. I have three boys and a husband, and so it's nice to finally have a space where I can have just something a little girlier. I love the little kind of modern touches mixed with the antique part of it. Um, the ceiling's really special. There's water outside. You know, I can unwind, just disappear. There's a, a giant Alphonse Mucha on the wall that my friend Soleil Moon Fry gave me years ago for Christmas. I just thought it went so well in here. It's always hung in spare bedrooms before, but now I finally display it kind of in the center of the house. All right, so here's the kitchen. We've kind of got a two-parter. This is sort of the functioning catering kitchen, if you will. And then this is our pretty kitchen <laughs> with our beautiful gold sink. And I can't take credit for cooking anything. It's my husband. He likes to eat, so he has to cook. So I am constantly cleaning up, but he's the, he's the master chef, so that's not me. So when you see there a little towel here, hey, good looking, what you cooking? That's all about him. So I feel like I'm constantly like doing dishes and cleaning things up and I constantly try to keep this area clean and free. And this gold sink is kind of a killer too because it tarnishes very easily. So I'm constantly cleaning this thing. This is Cleo. This is our, our oldest girl, right? And we have a new boy that's living with us now named Sully. We name all, all of our dogs after Disney characters. So Cleo's after Pinocchio, right? Right, lady? Yeah, yeah. She's such a good girl. You wanna go outside? Do you wanna go outside? Let's go outside. Come on. So our outdoor spot here is awesome. Um, we spend a lot of time out here as a family. We like to eat out here. We do move around a lot. My husband and I, I'm from New York, but I lived in LA. He's from Alabama. We met in Kentucky. We lived in LA when we had our first two kids and we moved to Connecticut. We love Lake Tahoe and the mountains and the lake. And so we tried to live there for two years, but it wasn't exactly right for our family. So then we were like, well, let's try Nashville. So now we're in Nashville. We've been trying to find the right place for our family for years. The pool is awesome. It's the first time my kids have ever lived in a house with a pool. And we love to just come out here and relax and we hear the frogs and the birds and just enjoy outside so much. I think for me, uh, a large part of sort of my continuing success is that I, I never wanted you know, I, I didn't have these these grandiose ideas of fame and, and riches and all that. I wanted um, a life. There's a lot out there that I'm still looking to do and, uh, and raise my boys. I've got a few more years with them in the house and that's what's gonna matter at the end. Thank you guys for visiting me in my Nashville home and seeing my happy place. <laughs> Say bye. Huge thanks to Melissa Joan Hart for showing us around her killer house in Nashville. By the way, Melissa's got a podcast filled with chats about everything that she finds hashtag binge worthy. And you can find that wherever you get your podcasts. That's going to do it for another fun filled edition of Pop Star Plus. Keep on coming back. Hang out with us. We appreciate it. Same time, same place tomorrow. Have a great day. them out there in today all day land we're so happy you tuned into our digital show today in 30 this is the very last day of march oh my gosh why is that so shocking <laughs> all right well here's what's happening today for a third straight day yeah. 
severe storms tore through the south, spawning destructive tornadoes. We're going to have a first-hand look at the damage. And Al is tracking today's ongoing weather up and down the East Coast. And then Chris Rock, he had his first comedy show since that infamous Oscar slap that happened. We're going to show you what the comedian had to say. And we're also going to hear from some other star comedians. They're standing up for their fellow performers. And then on this last day of Women's History Month, we're shining light on some great products from women-owned businesses. You will want to get your hands on these ASAP. Yeah, we're going to close things out with pasta master to the stars, Evan Funky. <laughs> I love his name. He taught us how to make restaurant-quality pasta in the comfort of our own kitchen. That's all coming up on this Thursday edition of Today in 30. We'll start with NBC's Blaine Alexander, who joins us from Tallulah, Louisiana. Hey, Blaine, good morning. Well, Hoda, good morning to you. Normally, this building would have been filled with students at the time that the storms hit. Instead, officials decided to cancel class ahead of the storms, and it's a good thing they did. Take a look at this. This is where the roof used to be. If you walk over here with me, this is where the roof ended up, completely shattered down here on the ground. Now, officials here in Louisiana and areas across the south are working to clean up this morning as millions more remain in the storm's path. This morning, in the weather-worn south, another round of severe storms. Overnight, torrential rain soaked New Orleans' famous Bourbon Street, prompting flash flood warnings and sending tourists scrambling for cover. While powerful winds toppled trees around Louisiana, leaving crews rushing to clear the roadways. A similar scene in Mississippi. After a supercell thunderstorm hit Hattiesburg overnight, and in neighboring Alabama, the National Weather Service there warned of a large and extremely dangerous tornado as heavy rains flooded streets from city to city. Across the South, more than 100,000 people left without power. Now the storm continues its charge to the east, with nearly 57 million Americans still under the risk of severe weather from Florida to New York. The impact has been felt throughout the week. Earlier Wednesday in Jackson, Mississippi, tornado sirens sounding off as funnel clouds formed in the sky. That's it. That's a funnel. Just miles away, uprooted trees crashing into homes. The tree fell in my house, messed my washroom up, my house is flooding. In some areas, wind speeds reached 80 miles per hour. In Tallulah, Louisiana, this local high school caught the brunt of the storm, leaving classrooms crushed. We wrecked. While in Arkansas, a confirmed EF3 tornado near Springdale left a path of destruction, tearing down cell towers, ripping rooftops. I had no idea it'd be this bad. I couldn't even get out my front door. Officials there say at least seven people were injured, too, critically. One local elementary school releasing these photos of a damaged building. Classes are expected to resume today. And in that report, you heard the repeated reports of tornadoes. Today, officials now have the task of exactly taking stock of what exactly happened overnight. We know the National Weather Service is going to be surveying across Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi, sifting through the damage to determine exactly what happened when these storms blew through. Hoda. All right, Blaine Alexander for us there in Tallulah. Blaine, thank you. Well, let's turn to Al now. He's got mm -hmm. more on those overnight tornadoes and also the ongoing threat of more mm -hmm. severe weather. That's right. It, it now moves to the East Coast. So right now we are looking at tornado watches stretching Florida on into Georgia. We've got a tornado warning now just to the east of Panama City as this very potent line of thunderstorms makes its way east. 57 million people up and down the coast at risk for severe weather. We're watching two areas. First off, from now until this evening, Florida into South Carolina. Tornadoes possible. The highest risk will be the panhandle on into Georgia, damaging thunderstorms and wind gusts. And then late this afternoon into tonight, North Carolina to, do, to New York, brief thunderstorms, tornadoes, hail up to one inch with this system and winds are going to be a big factor. 37 million people from the Great Lakes all the way down into Florida looking at wind gusts anywhere from 25 to 50 miles per hour as this system pushes through causing big problems. Rainfall amounts here in the Northeast, there could be areas that see up to one inch per hour, so there could be some localized flash flooding, but the big jackpot numbers are down into the Southeast. Panhandle of Florida from Port St. Joe all the way down to Tampa and Orlando we're talking about anywhere from three to five inches of rain as this front stalls out. 
All right, we'll turn now to that stunning news out of Hollywood this morning. Bruce Willis stepping away from acting after a career spanning more than 40 years. Yeah, the Star's family making that announcement, revealing Bruce Willis has been diagnosed with a medical condition that affects his cognitive abilities. NBC Morning News Now anchor Joe Fryer has more. Hey, Joe, good morning. Good morning. Bruce Willis has been a household name since the 1980s and one of the industry's most bankable stars at the box office. But now his family confirms that Willis was diagnosed recently with aphasia, which can affect all aspects of language from speech to reading and writing. Known for his tough talking on screen persona, that iconic catchphrase, Bruce Willis is now stepping away from the spotlight. His family writes that he has recently been diagnosed with aphasia, which is impacting his cognitive abilities. As a result of this, and with much consideration, Bruce is stepping away from the career that has meant so much to him. Adding, as Bruce always says, live it up. And together, we plan to do just that. Willis got his break in the 80s on the small screen. Just remember, you're dressed like that for America. And I, for one, salute you. Salute you, Addison. Starring alongside Sybil Shepard in the primetime hit Moonlighting, okay. earning an Emmy and Golden Globe. At the time, he opened up about his newfound fame in an interview here on Today. I never really uh, got into this business seeking fame and fortune. If anything, it makes me want to um, keep my private life more private. Willis later cemented his action star status as Detective John McClane in Die Hard, a role he'd reprise four more times. Welcome to the party, pal! The beloved actor has found success in a wide range of films, from Pulp Fiction to Sixth Sense and Armageddon. If we don't get this job done, then everybody's gone. Willis has five daughters, two with current wife Emma Hemming and three with ex Demi Moore. The former It couple has remained close even after their divorce, with Moore even surprising Willis at his Comedy Central roast a few years ago. I just look at our marriage like the sixth sense. You were dead the whole time. <laughs> and no matter what, you will always be family. You've been a great friend, a great father, and easily one of my top three husbands. Earlier this month, Moore shared a photo with Willis as he celebrated his 67th birthday, writing, thankful for our blended family. You know, while Hollywood is mourning the loss of this actor on screen, that he has this support system behind the scenes uh, to really tackle this challenging time together as a family. According to the LA Times, some people who worked with Willis on recent films have noted the actor has shown signs of cognitive decline on sets and have expressed concern with his well-being. The LA Times quoted several sources as saying that Willis struggled to remember his dialogue and was even fed lines through an earpiece at one point. Back to you. All right, Joe, thank you very much. Well, joining us now is Dr. Gayatri Devi, a professor of neurology at Hofstra University. Dr. Devi, good morning to you. Good morning. We know you haven't treated Bruce Willis, so mm -hmm. but just, just generally, because a lot of folks are saying aphasia, not yeah. sure they've heard that. What What is aphasia? Aphasia is when you have trouble communicating with another person. You know, whether, you have, whether you're doing it through sign language, through writing, or through speaking, you're not able to communicate your thoughts or or be some in some cases be able to understand what someone else is telling you. Is it really obvious because we all kind of can't remember things? Is it something that you, you listen to somebody and say, wow, there's something really wrong here? Sometimes it's subtle. Sometimes oh. you think, oh, is this person deaf? Can't yeah. they not hear you? Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's much more apparent where you're clear that the person's really having trouble speaking or they really aren't understanding what you're telling them. Oh. Now, there's a, a few different ways that this can come on. You could have a stroke. You could have a head trauma could be dementia but does it can it kind of come on slowly and then mm -hmm. progress and get worse over time yes in some cases depending on the cause it can start slowly and progress and sometimes it can happen abruptly mm. sometimes you're talking to someone on the phone and suddenly you can't speak because you've had a stroke wow. um, and that's a case where you have to go to the emergency room right away. Look, we've all been there where yeah. we can't remember yeah. a word. It happens to us on air, unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> here yeah. and there. I can think yeah. of one yesterday, yeah. actually. <laughs> right. But is that something to worry about? Oh my gosh, right. could this be coming on? When do I need to see a doctor mm -hmm. like you? Right. So 
trouble finding words and trouble finding names is common for all of us mm -hmm. and especially women as we go through menopause also mm -hmm. it's a common symptom um, but it's when the problem persists uh. if it's interfering with our functioning that's when you really need to seek help again we know you haven't treated bruce willis but can there be improvement are there things you can do if you have this that can you can get yourself back on track yes you know you can do speech therapy language therapy those kinds of things can help depending on the cause so sometimes mm -hmm. if you have a stroke you can make a complete complete recovery sure. mm. from a condition like aphasia. Mm -hmm. All right, well, Dr. Debbie, it's good to get this information from you. Thank you very Thanks, much. Dr. Debbie. Thanks for having me. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it, I know that it can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at five on NBC News Now. Who will meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time? When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. We're back with Chris Rock's first public comments on being slapped by Will Smith at Sunday's Oscars. Yeah, Chanel's here with more on what the comedian had to say and what others are saying yes. come to his defense. Good morning. Good morning. Rock headlined two comedy shows in Boston last night, receiving standing ovations from the sold-out crowd. As for that Oscars moment, he addressed the controversy and promised he'll have even more to say in the future. Hey, Chris, you ready for tonight, Chris? Overnight, Chris Rock returning to the stage. <laughs> oh, wow. For the first time wow. since Will Smith slapped him at the Oscars, Rock keeping his sense of humor. How was your weekend? In audio obtained by Variety, Rock briefly talked with the sold out crowd last night. I'm still kind of processing what happened. Saying he wasn't really ready to talk about the incident. So Rock show was briefly interrupted by someone in the crowd, but overall, the crowd rallied around Rock, starting with a long standing ovation, which Rock said made him misty eyed. And Rock's fellow comedians are rallying around him, too. Rock's stand up set coming just hours after the Motion Picture Academy announced they've started disciplinary proceedings against Smith. It's On the Ellen DeGeneres deal. show, Oscar co host Wanda Sykes questioning why Smith wasn't removed from the ceremony. And for them to let him stay in that room and enjoy the rest of the show and accept his award. I was like, how gross is this? This is just the wrong message. The Academy says Smith was asked to lead the ceremony and refused. Comedians David Spade and Dana Carvey speaking out on a podcast, saying watching the incident was triggering for them, reminding them of childhood bullying and condemned how Rock was seemingly left alone to handle the situation. It, it must have been tough for Chris to sit in the back and realize literally nothing happened. No one walked up, no security, no stop the show, no, it was just like, on with the show, this is it. Amy Schumer, who also co-hosted the show, weighing in too, writing in part in a since deleted Instagram post, she is still triggered and traumatized. I love my friend Chris Rock and believe he handled it like a pro. The whole thing was so disturbing. 
others now worried the incident could impact future performances. So it's a terrible precedent for comedy clubs? Yes. Like, are people going to yes. decide that they're going to go on stage and Ooh. smack the comedian now? They... In Boston, fans at Rock's show last night praising how he dealt with the incredibly difficult situation. So ridiculously wrong. I, I, I was proud of the way he handled it. Rock has four more shows in Boston this week, so the world will be watching. According to multiple reports, during his second show, Rock said he had not talked to anyone about what happened at the Oscars, presumably referring to Will Smith. As for Smith, he apologized to Rock in a social media post, and the Academy thanked Rock for his, quote, resilience in that moment. Yeah, I think it's it's good that we're spotlighting Chris Rock's yes. resilience I so because I think all the focus has been on, on Will Smith. I think it's yeah. just taking some time yeah. for people to process it. Like yeah. he said, some more to come. Well, yeah. he didn't even have that time. He didn't yeah. have that time. Really yeah. just showed and give, given the fact that he's been, you know, he talked about being bullied. Right. And not yes. Responding, right. That's it. And yet he had the right response. Yes. In that moment, yes. and I think everybody is so impressed by what he's done and how yeah, he's how he's handled. It. It. I think he's going to also forward. figure out his take on this once he hits stage. Which yeah. way am I going to go with this? Because yeah. yeah. it's unearthing a lot of emotional stuff and being bullied in his past. Right. Exactly. I mean, he's talking about he was bullied up in his adulthood. Yeah. He was yeah. robbed yeah. at SNL when he worked at SNL. He was sucker yeah. punched, and they took his. So this is a, opening up a lot of emotions yeah. for him. And, the idea yeah. that, and on the other side of the spectrum, it's hey, man, maybe we'll take the high road. Yeah. Sure. Let's yeah. Get by the way, you don't have to. You don't have to respond immediately. Right. He's well within his right, take his time, yeah. figure right. it out, process it, Absolutely. and then deal with it yeah. on his terms yeah. and Absolutely. his time. Boy, this thing yeah. is not going away. No. Every no. day no. there's something, something new. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Have some good stuff for you today. We are back with the first look at today's episode of our streaming show, Shop All Day. In honor of Women's History Month, the Shop Today team is celebrating women-owned businesses. That's right. Shop All Day contributor Jesse Post is here. You can scan the QR code or you could go old school. Text SHOP to 34318. Jesse, good to yes. see you. Good to see you. Good morning. And I'm just so excited about this episode because there's so many incredibly innovative and creative women mm -hmm. We have some fabulous businesses. Okay. Let's start with spring cleaning okay. for around the house. I'm fascinated by this. Yes. So this is an overachiever, Al. This is okay. a total multitasker. So it's called the Universal Multipurpose Cleaner. And it is plant-based. So it does oh. all the cleaning. It'll clean Can pretty much off? everything mm -hmm. without harsh chemicals. Can You've got to smell it. it. Okay. Yes. I, I, smell I do first. that. Oh my gosh! So, yeah, guess nice. who founded this company? Who founded Ooh. this company? Chris Jenner and really? Emma Greed. Yes, who you may know from Shark Tank season mm -hmm. 13, and she founded Skims with Kim Kardashian, oh. also good American, Khloe Kardashian, and this stuff will clean 
everything oh, from wow. marble, porcelain, hardwood huh. floors, I'm and here more. For it. And it feels luxurious. I mean, for five dollars and ninety-eight cents. Five ninety-eight. Oh, yes, you okay. feel like oh, you know, an everyday task. And you're not it's inhaling like crazy fumes. No, you know what it smells I mean? so good. They're way into yeah. scents. Okay, so this is incredible. This is Moisture called stick? the My Matcha all over moisture stick. Okay. It is by a company called Coco Kind, and this was created by Priscilla Sai, and she quit her Wall Street job okay. because she was looking for a product that could help her hormonal acne, mm -hmm. and she just came up with this incredible so all over just moisture put it on stick. Like that? Yes, it's a stick that will moisturize moisture. anything on your body. Oh yeah. I mean, really anything from your lips to your face to your to your hands. Your feet and when you're wearing sandals. Guess what? Oh. It's made with real matcha tea. You might want two versions. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yes. They don't want to. When it put smells that in like a nice places. cup of tea. It's so good, All and right. it's got caffeine in it, so it helps to be uh, depuff your eyes. Okay. So I love that. Well, you know I love my lashes. Oh so yes. Let's talk and about guess these. what? You know, a lot of women though are intimidated. I by know. Lashes, don't be intimidated. Right? It's so fun. It's so it's fun. Like, to me, it's and like a cape. Is it fun? Right. It yes. is. It feels huh. like a a cape. Right. Like you're like superwoman. And and it really opens up your eyes. But uh, we've got a brand that is going to change women's conception right, of eyelashes. It. It's called Love seen by Jenna Lyons. You guys know her style guru. Mm -hmm. She was the president and uh, creative director, former of J. Crew. Oh, okay. So yes. she got together um, with Troy Olivier and they came up with lashes that redefine the entire Why? product because they are incredibly natural looking. These are, you know, for every day, not just big days. Mm -hmm. And check this out. This is their most um, sort of natural lash. They come in so many different kinds, different colors. So it goes on top of your lashes? Yes. <laughs> yes. No, and I'll do it for you, but these yeah. are game changers so high quality you can wear them up to 10 times and what a chic little case well, right? Well that's cool too you can wear them oh. 10 times. Yes 10 times. Oh it's got its own little carrier. Yeah. It does. It does. It does. I know and so that's right. redefining lashes. All okay right. so next up we have two must have. This is your favorite. Yes leave-in hair product. Oh out. there you go. Yes from Kristen S who is a celebrity hairstylist okay. and influencer 500 thousand followers and what they love is her you know perfectly undone oh I didn't work on Whimsical my hair. Curl. Yes. What's the difference between this and Right this? well this is a leave-in air dry curl mm -hmm. cream mm -hmm. so that means you can air dry run out the door and your hair still looks great. Don't you always air dry? Uh, no. Hair dryer. Oh hair dryer. Hair dryer okay. right and then this you is the curl defining yeah. cream so if you've got curls mm -hmm. right you just mine are use done, it. Mine are not mine are done with a wand but if you have real curls. Yes and the shop today team is obsessed with this product. Okay. It works so well mm -hmm. and I mean so is the rest of Okay, so of the last world. but not least. Okay. Tell the, me about is this like it's so funny. I saw this online. It's like the best selling yes. something. This is from Somersault and this is started by two women, Lori Coulter and Reshma uh, Shadaram Chamberlain. Okay. And this is called the Unicorn of Bathing Suits, the most universally flattering bathing suit ever. You know okay. why? Talk to me okay. about this. Okay, listen to what they did. The okay. brand says they went and they took 1.5 million measurements from okay. over a group of 10,000 women okay. to come up with this fit. So it is inclusive, and guess what? It has lots of uh, just suck it in. Yes, That's lots what you want. of uh, compression material, yes. and it's got that one shoulder. It's, it's like so a cute. Bathing suit? That is, but here's the thing. Ow, ow, you need ow, a spanks, but you, otherwise, if you're not careful, it'll have spillage. Exactly. But they did so much As research. To <laughs> like you don't want. No, seriously. If you suck too much, you have stuff hanging out. Excuse me. That's right. So they thought of everything, Chanel. Uh, I mean, this took a turn. Cross yes. Next time you I go on vacation, Puerto Rico. Right? Yeah, yeah, Puerto Can't Rico. wait for the guy version. Yes. yes. <laughs> Thanks so much. For more on these products, head to today.com slash shop all day. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter, in this closet. I took shelter, right in this closet, right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? 
Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Okay, it is not often we have a pasta master in our kitchen, but today's our lucky day. Evan Funky, he's a California chef who just opened a new restaurant. It is so hot in L.A., it's hard to get a table, but it's called Mother Wolf. I feel like right. everybody's been writing yeah. about it. And this past weekend, he was serving cuisine to the biggest stars at the Vendy Fair viewing an after party at, on Oscar mm. night. Like, we think... Did these people eat? And but yes, they were. They crushed. They crushed they it. Crushed. What did they love the most of your food? I think they ate the most pizza. You made pizza? Oh, yes. Did you fry Absolutely. anything or you don't do We that? fried squash blossoms. We <gasps> fried arancini. We fried soupli. We fried meatballs. Come on. OK, wait. We I just... made pasta. Oh, Come God. on. Let's... I just read something. Is this true? This is a five ingredient pasta yeah. dish. That's it? It is. It's simple. It okay. is. And so it depends on whose it? grandmother you're talking to. <laughs> Uh, the oh. recipe shifts. Okay. So this is a pasta, rigatoni okay. alla matriciana. It's from uh, the town of Amatrice, okay. which is in the Rieti region right. of Lazio. So we have some mm -hmm. cured pork gel here called guanciale. Mm -hmm. And we just want to slice mm -hmm. about an eighth of an inch. Okay. And then we want to cut tiles. Okay. That way we retain the crispness, ah. but it doesn't take forever to, to render. Okay. Exactly. Got it. So... We got that. We've got a hot pan here, and we're just going to start to render this slow, just okay. like you would bacon. Okay. Yeah. All right. Just In fact, give I this thought it was bacon, of... to be honest. Mm -hmm. It's better than bacon. Mm -hmm. It's all about the bacon. fat ratio, mm -hmm. fat to meat ratio. Mm -hmm. And you want a little bit of meat, but you want mostly fat. So we're going to allow that to render. Mm -hmm. I'm going to slide over here. Magic of television. Oh, we have some good re-render. Now. Here's the key for this pasta, okay? okay you want to drop this into the yes, water? We're going to cook that for about three minutes. So while we talk, did you make that pasta? Uh, no, this is made in Brooklyn. Oh, this is yeah, fresh some, pasta. Some friends from Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got some rendered guanciale here, and it's mm -hmm. beautiful. And here's the thing. The love ratio, the love, <laughs> What's ratio, the love ratio for a pasta amatriciana is 50-50, okay? So Meaning... you want 50% pork fat and 50% Homo is this, oh, is so, this right? So 50 it's about right. That. Yeah. Okay. So that's the love ratio. So this pasta should not be red. It should be rosé. Rosé. Mm, okay. Love it. So what we're going to do <gasps> is... Oh, that's all right. I got it. What we're going to do is we're just going to eyeball this. Let me okay? see. There you go. Stop. Whoa. Okay, that's Fizzle. about 50%. All right, and then we're just gonna look how he does pot. that. Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. And that's rose. That's it. Yeah, so it's not red, it's rose. Now, there's a couple of different iterations of this pasta dish. Some add onion, some add pepperoncino mm. and black pepper, but I'm a mm. purist. Just, just the like pomodoro okay. and the guanciale. Okay. Now, what? And you can buy this at the grocery store, pomodoro. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So, this is tomato passata. You can use canned okay. tomato puree if you can. Or uh, originally, when the tomato was introduced into Italy, it was just fresh tomatoes. Okay. So, the basis of the origin of this pasta actually comes from Grisciano, which uh -huh. is a neighboring community. Uh, and it's called Pasta Allegricia, which is just guanciale. Mm. Black, uh, black pepper. Oh my God. It smells Pecorino. so good. So that's it. Now you just take the top pasta it. and dump it in? Exactly. Wait, so what? Do you do it al dente Look at in that. there so it doesn't over? I do it over... very al dente. Okay. I'm a big fan of texture. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll go straight in to the pasta. There you go, JP. Beautiful. Into the sauce. And we'll toss. Go Whoa. ahead and pass Look it behind me. Toss. There you go. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we need oh. is a little bit of Pecorino Romano. Look at that. Here, just to finish. Oh, my mm. God. Oh, my gosh. Mm. <laughs> I've made a few hundred thousand of these. Mm. This, this is mm. amazing. Isn't it so good? Mm -hmm. And it's so simple. It was simple. And it's just about the technique, mm. and that's it. Oh, and my gosh. Done. This is heaven. No wonder why oh they crushed gosh. it at Vanity Fair. No wonder party. they called you the master pasta uh, chef. I'm a student, perpetual student. Mm. Well, that's, that's why, why I like so it. Make this recipe at home. You can go to today.com slash food. That was great. Everybody was saying so how good. good it was. I know. I was like, how do they get it all in the 30 minutes? We just do. Anyway, we get another big one tomorrow. <laughs> It'll be for the 1st of April. We'll see you then. Goodbye.
Over the years, I've been lucky enough to step into the Today Show kitchen and watch the best chefs from around the world teach us some incredible recipes. And then we had made that pesto, which was, oh, exactly. darn. That's like, you know, I almost got out of this one clean. <laughs> Turn it down. Oh, my God. I had one job. None of which I've mastered because, well, I actually don't know the first thing about how to cook. But I'm putting those days behind me for good. Today, executive chef Aisha Nurjaya is here to help me test my culinary prowess and step it up a notch. We're going to make a Mediterranean-inspired mezzi feast, including my favorite chicken shawarma with a tangy white sauce and homemade hummus, plus a few special favorites from her show-stopping restaurant, Shuka and Shuket. I'm a little nervous, a little intimidated, but mostly just so excited to try. So let's get started. Chef Aisha. You know, oh, I am your super fan. And I appreciate that. And now you have heard that I don't know how to cook anything, right? I've heard that, but I want to see it for myself. Let's get started. Shrimp okay, perfect. Shawarma. Well, let's cheers first. Oh. Have a drink here. Oh, where's my... Oh, what is this This fancy is a gazo. So this is like basically a fruit juice that's topped with a little bit of seltzer. Mm. And some herbs. That is delicious. So there's some blood orange in here, some cara cara, a touch of grapefruit, and seltzer. And if we were feeling like getting a little litty, you could have put a little tequila. I could see a little something, a little something <laughs> extra in there, but I've got it. I've, we've got knives. I have to stay sober. We're for gonna this. stay focused right now. Okay. Okay. So let me look at the recipe. I'm sure. Because I'm a new cook, I get obsessed about the All recipe. Right. But I have a plan. Our plan for today is start the chicken shawarma, make and mix the white sauce, prepare the hummus, create a pantry salad, prepare the toppings for the chicken shawarma, and serve and eat. We're gonna start with the marinade first. Okay. Okay? So right to your left, you have mm -hmm. some lemon juice. Yes. We're gonna put that right in here. Okay. And then we're gonna use some garlic paste. Now okay. this garlic paste, I'm gonna hand yeah. this to you. Now this is one, I'm already scared. Garlic paste. Well, Don't first of all, I gotta open it. Okay. But I'm gonna oh, show you is. something. We're just gonna put a little bit of olive oil in the spoon and kind of coat it with this. Oh, you're like basically greasing your- Exactly. Wow, that is so smart. Right, so Cooking <laughs> show over, this is incredible. <laughs> this is revolutionary. Would be great if you added a little bit of that olive oil in there. Mm -hmm. How much? All of it. It's like baking when they tell you oh. like dry ingredients versus wet ingredients. Yes, you okay. want to kind of put the, either the, all the dry in first mm -hmm. or the wet. I How like much to do whisking? The wet. No, that's fine. As long as it's combined. But right now we're going to add a little bit of our spice blend. You have one tablespoon of black pepper. Mm -hmm. This is cinnamon. Okay. So well, right this now is, that was paprika. This is cumin. Cumin. And this okay. is my favorite. Okay. It's the color of my shirt. Mm, it is. What is this? This is turmeric. I was gonna guess that. Oh, I love so it. So this is really gonna give that earthy flavor to the shawarma mm -hmm. and also that beautiful color. So we're gonna whisk that together. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to recognize Look how beautiful this marinade. This is. I know. All right, perfect. All right, so this looks beautiful. Okay. And now we're gonna do the onion. So okay, wait, one. I know how to do this. Okay. What so you wanna do is, at this point, you can cut the little piece off at the end. Here. Okay, okay. Okay. This is off. Yes. And then you kind of want to follow the curvature of the onion with your knife. So we're not going to slice straight down. We're going to slice like this, a little bit on an angle, if you will. Yes, perfect. Like that? Yep. Perfect. Okay. There you go. Mm -hmm. But now that's done. Look how beautiful that is. Okay. So we're going to put that in there. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. And we're going to mix this together. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you mind grabbing the chicken. So right now we're going to use chicken thighs okay. and I love chicken thighs because I find them to be super forgiving. Yes. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to dump the chicken oh, right onto our thing. You're a wild woman. Because we don't need all of this paper. Okay. That Christmas. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Christmas. Okay. So I'm going to cut this first so I can show you. You notice my, my hand is like this, mm -hmm. like okay. doing a C, and then you're going up and down, slicing right through. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling? Good. Is it like... Okay. Beautiful. Is it? Yes. Okay. It's hard to do that knuckle thing. I know yeah. you're supposed to. You have to practice it. Yours looks like it's easy to cut and then when I do it I'm like sawing like I'm Paul Bunyan in the forest. <laughs> Maybe to, I just need to be more confident. Yes, you have Ooh. to be easy on yourself in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have one more there. Okay, here we go. All right. Okay. Now, now, your best, we have beautiful kitchen tools here, mm -hmm. but your best kitchen tool are going to be your hands. Oh. So you're going to get right in there. Ooh, and I like it with the gloves because then I just don't feel it. all gross. Right. Hello. So you want to make sure that each crevice of those chicken thighs, yeah. remember the parts that we saw that were open, like where the bone was? Yes. That all that marinade gets in okay, there. Okay, so I really want to get in there. Exactly. Okay. These thighs have the life. You're, the full massage kidding. here. Look at this. They're living this their best life. treatment. It yeah. looks beautiful. So we're going to have you put that in the refrigerator. Okay, I'm going to cover and it and have, put it in. Yes, and I have one in there, if you don't mind grabbing it, that oh, has yeah. been marinated already. Okay. I'll make some room for you. Perfect. 
48 hours later 48 through hours the magic later. of television. Da -da 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 -da. So let's uncover this. So this is made. No, what if you really didn't have 48 hours or you're a bad planner? Like, I mean, what's you the could bare do, minimum? You could do it for four hours. You could. Really? But I can't guarantee you that that really deep flavor. Got it. That's the only thing. Fair enough. So if you smell this, you can smell all that hard work that you mm. did with the garlic. Delish. Yes. And I'm going to hand you this sheet tray. So the key here is what we want to do is make sure that we put this on the sheet tray, but we give it enough space that the heat is hitting it so we're not overcrowding it. Okay. Why so don't I just help you out by kind of like doing a little bit of the dump method oh, here. is that all right? Yep. Oh, and okay. then you are going to use your tongs spread to okay. spread them out, yeah, right? right. But like, does each guy like, have to live in his own little world? No, nah, they just have to have a little space around them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Good? Yeah, I think Perfect. so. Perfect. Okay. So we'll walk this over to the oven. Now, does the rack position matter in this? As long as it's in the, it's, as long as it's, they're not on the same shelf, you'll mm -hmm. be okay. Okay. So I'll go here. Okay. okay. So we're gonna put that in there. Chicken shawarma is in the oven. But it's not a good shawarma unless you have this beautiful white sauce. You have to have the white sauce. So what is it? So have you ever eaten like out of a cart, a halal cart? Yeah. And you get like chicken over rice mm -hmm. and the guy says white sauce, hot sauce, and you like double white sauce? Yes. This is really where this recipe was born. Okay. It is now like the ranch of the kitchen. <laughs> Every, they put it on shawarma, family meal. I've seen it go on pasta. I mean, they take it to a French place. French fries. I mean, that's the best. Yes. That's the best application, if you ask me. <laughs> okay. So we're going to take some of the technique that we learned in the first mm -hmm. about the wet and the dry. Yes. And we're going to start this. So to your, your left, <laughs> okay. you have um, some creme fraiche. This is mayo. I recognize okay. that. Okay. We have mayo. Couple minutes. And then in your next container, we're going to have the yogurt. I like to use Greek yogurt because I like the thickness of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it gives the sauce like a nice body. Okay. So okay. you have lemon juice there. Yeah. To your lemon left. Juice, to your lemon okay. juice. Okay. And then the next thing you're gonna do is gonna grate that garlic clove on the microplane. Ooh, now this is Have scary. you done that before? I haven't. I have to say these things are scary. The reason why you feel uncomfortable is probably because you don't want to nick your finger. Because I have nicked my finger. So what you would do is put on a glove. Okay, so, so I'm gonna put that. the whole thing. Three quarters of it. It's an extra large clove we, I chose just so that you wouldn't feel. Mm -hmm. See, yeah, it's so scary. Close. Like am I am I doing like this? You are. Back Can I just forth? show you something though? Yeah. It, you have to be in a place where you feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. So this rested on here, yeah. this oh. at a point, and then if you do this, oh, you have a lot better. of space between you and the edge. So you could kind of oh, that's a better just do way it to like do three it. or yeah. four times. I gotta tell you, this gives me a little anxiety. So tap it three or four times. Oh. And let's turn it around. Should be all good. And that was perfect. One teaspoon sherry vinegar. Okay. okay. Now if you don't have sherry vinegar, red wine vinegar will do. One time when I was in high school, my mother said to me, Savannah, did you and your girlfriends drink my sherry wine, cooking wine? And I was like, no. But then I thought to myself, huh, would that work? <laughs> Perfect. Mm. Okay. And we're going to add the dry spices now. Oh. Oh, there they are. Okay, see, I missed it. I would have been like, and we're done. White sauce over. Almost, no, almost. Okay. So we have black pepper, a mm. half a teaspoon. Okay. And next is our garlic powder. And here we have onion powder. Mm-hmm. One teaspoon onion powder. Onion powder and garlic powder are those two spices in, in your pantry mm -hmm. that will always get you out of trouble. Okay. If you ever need like a quick a marinade and you yeah. don't know, onion powder, garlic powder, salt, and okay. olive oil do the trick. It, like they cover all the sins. Huh? All the sins. Okay. There we go. That's okay. Nice. Okay. Good. Okay. And Did then I we have our salt. All? No salt. How much salt? One, one, one half, half teaspoon. teaspoon salt. Okay. Mm. How would you tell if this is good or not? I learned something. And what was you it? Must taste it. And here <gasps> I present you with your magic tasting spoon box. I just love this. May I? Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay. And I'm gonna taste, taste it too. It. And what we're tasting for is that all of these key players mm. are in harmony together. I mean, sprinkle my ashes with this. It you is did a great so job. good. Do you think now it's you good? Got, it's delicious. I think it's perfect. And now you can understand <clears throat> why my kitchen uses it on everything. I wouldn't change one thing. So let's put this in the bowl that we're going to serve it in, because oh, it's okay. one less step that we have to do later. Oh, smart. Okay. Maybe I'll get you another spoon. Oh, you got it? I'll do it like this. Okay. And the key when you do it like this is mm -hmm. just keep pouring it right in the middle. Oh, okay. It'll make a little beautiful mound. Mm -hmm. Is that good? Yes, it's perfect. It looks delicious. I get obsessing about clean plate club here. Okay. Okay. So we're going to put this in the refrigerator. Has anyone ever licked the bowl? Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, this is also good with crudite. Oh, so if I was cooking, yes. I would leave this dirty bowl right here. Yeah. It's not chicken. We're okay. Yes. We'll have a little snack. So let's get this in the refrigerator. We're cover and refrigerate. Perfect. Aisha, ask and you as shall receive. As promised, we're ha we have a little bit of uh, celery sticks okay, here. let's just try and this, it out. We're just going to have a little snack. I mean, we deserve it after all this Oh, cooking. my gosh, we do. Can I double dip on my side? Yeah, of course. I mean, it's so good. Have I mentioned how good it is? 
Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. If I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. It's the little moments that are the transforming moments. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh, I could apply that. I want to stop for a second. <laughs> In season two, I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now? What it all means for you for an hour every day? It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. We will meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. For our next trick, homemade hummus. Two words I never thought I'd utter. Why should I make it when I can go to the store? You could always customize it to how you want it. If you love garlic, if you like smoked paprika, if you want to keep it super plain. So we're going to show you a plain hummus. Okay. And then we're going to doctor it up mm -hmm. as you like. I heard through the grapevine that the machine we're going to use is something that you're not a big fan of. Don't say the food processor. I'm gonna have to. It's like you're a home alone moment with the big furnace in the basement. I have food processor okay. fear. We're yes. gonna show you exactly that, that how it, how unintimidating it is. Okay. okay. So let's grab the food processor. First of all, it weighs 600 pounds. It does. First of all, this machine is built for safety. So we're gonna open the blades mm -hmm. here, okay. and then we have all of these uh, accoutrements, if you will. No. See, so I'm this is. Get cut. Right. You always want to kind of assertively take it out and hold it by its edges, because this is very, very sharp. Yeah. This is the grater. This is what you would want to do if you were trying to make coleslaw. And this is the blade. So this slices things in discs. Okay. So if you had zucchini, cabbage would be good in here, too. What about too. potatoes? I hate slicing potatoes. Potatoes would be perfect. Okay. okay, so that's this. And then it comes with this nice microphone. So you can sing karaoke <laughs> while you're making it. But that's really for the attachments, and we're not going to use that right now, okay? And this is the blade. How do we choose this one? Because this is the one that's going to puree. Oh. So here we have right, chickpeas. Yes. So we're going to throw them in here. Them in. One, two. Okay. Four cups cooked chickpeas. One half cup tahini paste. So you're going to take oh, that, that with, your small, with your small little uh, spatula because you want to get every uh, oh, single little Maybe morsel of that out. Maybe it is a little pasty. It could work with it's, this. It's viscous. Yeah. Okay. That's okay, that. Okay. So your tahini is in. Mm -hmm. And then we have our lemon juice. One quarter cup of lemon juice. Right. Okay, Rotate. olive oil. Half cup olive oil. Okay, you can put that in there. Perfect. And then you have salt. Kosher salt. Now, this is one of those, yes. how much? You guys, what you, you chefs, you never want to say. Well, this is a good technique for you to learn. So that's nice, but this is what you really are going to look for. You want to make I, it rain. How do I know that? Because listen, you're going to have to learn how to cook by taste and touch. Okay. Okay? So I know that when I grab that, that that's mm -hmm. 28 grams. Okay. Because I've been cooking for a long time. Wow. So if a recipe calls for one tablespoon of salt, yes. can, I, can you open your hand? Mm -hmm. So you know That's what that, a lot. That, right, but you know what that feels like. Yeah. So half of that is what you would have used in that recipe, but I already put it in for you. Okay. So just so this way you know. <laughs> this way you know what it feels like. Okay. All right, I'm so not, put that on your board. Oh, put it on my board. It's okay. okay. And then we're going to do a little bit over the left shoulder because, you know, we can't oh, have anything. Is that like a good luck thing? we walk out of here today. Okay. Okay, perfect. So we're going to put the lid on. Okay. You ready? Yeah, let me just, oh boy, oh boy, stand clear. So what I'm do I need do... to cover this? Is no, it going to no, come no. exploding like, out? Hit this button. Is it pulse? That says off. Ah. Okay, good. Do it again. Where should I put this? Yeah, put your hand up there. Keep going. My pulse. Well, now how come I don't just on it? So you can on it, but okay. what I like to do is kind of pulse it so it, that it gets all the ingredients together. So oh. now you can put the on button. Okay. And just let it rip for a little while. All right. Like have a sip of your gazos. This is fun. Sure beats chopping all this stuff. Absolutely. Okay. And we're going to stop this. And this is really quintessential when you're using this machine because the blade is on the bottom, mm -hmm. right? And it's only going in one direction. What we like to do when we use this is take the top off mm -hmm. and we like to go around 
which I'm gonna do this time, mm -hmm. and you'll do the next, and take what's the ingredients mm -hmm. that are on the bottom and kind of oh. flip them on their top. Because mm -hmm. we wanna make sure that when we're making this hummus that everything has its same consistency, okay? So I'm so, gonna go pulse again. No, you're gonna put it on. Oh. And at this point, we're gonna stream in some of that water. All at once, or? or just a little bit at a okay. time. This is one cup of water. Mm -hmm. I actually think that we might use three quarters of a cup. Now this part is not a definite in a recipe. Mm -hmm. It depends how much you dried your chickpeas mm -hmm. and how much liquid is in there. Okay. So if you dump the whole quarter, the whole cup of water in there, it could be too liquidy. Okay. We want something that's gonna hold its peak. Look good, yeah. you see that? It's getting smoother, yeah. which I like it. And smooth. now you can see, if you step on my side, you see how this is really moving slowly? Yeah. That's why you have to stop. All right, so time to stop and, right? and you're gonna open have it. an intervention. Right? Mm -hmm. Perfect, here you are. Okay, so now I'm just like kind of going around the sides. Let's yes. get everybody in there. Oh. Okay, so okay. let's taste it. That's on point. Honey, that is delicious. Okay. Hummus. Perfect. So we're going to unclick it, mm -hmm. lift that up. My... Now, what's... how long can I keep this in my refrigerator? Three to four days. Okay. Okay. And, and the same just... thing, you're going to spoon it directly in the middle. Mm -hmm. I mean, this looks delish. And at Shuka and Shuket, we do the swoosh. And in the swoosh, we usually fill it with not, lots of nice things. So I do the spice first? Yep, let's do the All spice over first. just in my little... Whatever you like. Well, I think it looks kind of fancy when it's like... Is that good or is it that is too It is beautiful. Heavy, too no, 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 keep going. Okay. Mm. And you're going to fill that pool and all the little divots here. Oh, I love it. This looks like professional. I mean, you're killing it. Come on. I'm coming over when you're oh, making this. seriously. How beautiful oh my gosh, is that? that is gorge. All right. So we have some pita chips here. We could have had some crudite. Mm -hmm. I mean, listen, this is another one of those things. Why don't you take your little... Uh, Celery stick. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. You do a little dip. Exactly. And we'll make you like the little chef taste. Oh yes. Oh, I love that. And then we'll put that a little much, bit. huh? Oh yeah, my gosh. Yeah. Why not? Look at this. I mean, if we're gonna do I it. I mean, come to mama. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there we go. What do you think? I mean, it's so good. Awesome. So good. All right. Oh my gosh. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. If there is one thing I love at Shuka, Aisha, it's your salads. I love salad because it's it really represents the bounty of what is being grown. Fancy. We're kind of doing a pantry salad, if you will. Okay. So I found these things in the refrigerator. Okay. Okay. And we have some romaine mm -hmm. that I've just roughly chopped up here. Right. And what I'm going to do is show you how to cut uh, some of these tomatoes. Oh yeah. Okay. Not, not a, that's not a strong suit. So of mine. these are baby cherry tomatoes. Okay. So we're going to actually use a serrated knife for this. this nice. You're going to pinch the tomato a little bit, mm -hmm. and you're going to make it taut so that when you go right through the serrated knife and come back around, that it splits in half. Okay, wow. Okay. So I'm so, so you're gonna pinch it, you feel it's tight. I do. Right, put your knife and oh. go right through. Okay, great. Okay, we're gonna add it to here. Mm -hmm. 
And then here we have our uh, Persian cucumbers. Mm -hmm. I love to leave the skin on because they are so small. Oh, interesting. This, I, I always take the skin really? off. Really? But, yeah, but that's just, I don't know. Well, they're super healthy. Yes. Um, the, the, the cucumber itself. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think it adds some color and texture. Yeah. So because that's pretty small, I'm going to cut it, cut this into quarters. Mm -hmm. Again, I cut it in half. Those little. Perfect. And then Thanks. I would just cut them into half ounce, half inch mm -hmm. little pieces. Now, now that, would you do that's, it like that, or is that I a bad think idea? that's a little aggressive, because again, we want to be safe and we want to make it to the dinner table. <laughs> now I think so I'm just... doing a job. <laughs> so you want them cut side down, because now they're not going to roll away from you, oh, right, okay. right? And we're going to add these straight away to here. Okay, we're going to add some pine nuts. Okay. Do you like pine nuts? I do. I love pine nuts. I like pine nuts because they actually have really good uh, fat content, mm -hmm. and they add like this luxurious feel when you bite into them. Okay. And then last but not least would be our feta. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So we have everything in the bowl here. Yes. And now let's talk dressing. Okay. My favorite go-to dressing is lemon juice, olive oil, honey, and salt. Okay. Can I ask your tossing technique? Sure. This is what I would do. I go from the bottom up. It's okay. the same thing like when you were marinating the chicken, mm -hmm. from the bottom up. Okay. And I it. personally mm -hmm. don't like a lot of dressing. Yeah. So I would just like do a once around. That's what I just kind of figure people can add more if they so right. desire. How's that? Perfect, good? perfect. Okay. That's good. And then just. And then same thing, bottom mm -hmm. up. Yum. Maybe I'll put a little more feta because yeah. those nice little chunks mm -hmm. are now nestled Yum. at okay. the bottom. This looks delicious. Yes. Oh. So if you just want to put that to the okay. side, we have a few finishing touches before we eat. Okay. I thought we were done. What's this guy coming here for? Since you did such an amazing job and we've conquered your fears, we're going to bring him out again so that you can show him who's boss. The food processor? You know it. You and know this it. guy? Yes. Oh. But before we do that, I'm going to show you how to break this down. Okay. Okay. So this is red cabbage. Yeah. So we're going to cut a little bit of the bottom off like that. Mm -hmm. and, then you, and then you just want to remove the outer leaves. Yes. See what I mean? You got it, you got it. There right. you go. I guess I just got to be a They'll little be, more aggressive. You could use a little force. Yeah. We're going to cut this in half. You're going to take the knife. You're going to put it in as much as you can. Mm -hmm. Right? In the beginning. Got it? Okay. God. Yeah. Good, good. See, now I'm like okay. stuck. Hold and on. This guy's sticking right. out. Okay. So yeah. keep your hand flat. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. put yeah. your hand flat. Mm -hmm. And now push all the way down. Whoa. It might take three or four saws, but just keep your hand flat. <laughs> go ahead. You almost got it. Where's the chainsaw? <laughs> Can I get okay, saw it on the other side? Okay, let me help you for a second. Because what happened is that your knife is now in here, not the blade. Oh. So we're going to take that out, okay. okay? And then when you get to this point, you're going to take your knife, yeah. you're going to go straight down on this side, yeah. flip it, and straight down yeah, on the other side. Yeah, that's what I would want to do. Okay. I'd want to be like, shoot, shoot, like this. You know the other thing that's... Oh, ouch. Darn it. What happened? I've never gotten through a segment without... No, it was just a little tap. Okay. Just a little so wait, hold tap. on. But let's do it together so you don't have a tapping problem again. Oh, okay, great. Hold on, hold on, put it down, put it down, put it down, put it down. Then Starting to see. We're gonna go down here, okay? And then you gotta be assertive and go down here. Okay. Now right. what are we doing? Just cut it in half again so that I know that okay. you can do it. God. Okay, good. So you did it. Who'd think this would be the hardest part? Okay. So let's get the machine. You don't need all of that because we're gonna okay. all right. buzz it one, two, three. Okay. Okay. You wanna get the Where's bottom? my friend. Okay, here we go. Mm. There's Jeez. your friend. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Now this part is a little more complicated than the other one. Oh, now so we I'm going to show you blades. how to use these guys. All right. Okay. One is that you should always know that they're super sharp. Okay. So you only want to touch the edges. Okay. This part you want to hold down. Mm -hmm. You see how that little piece goes down? Yes. And you are going to turn it just like this was on an angle and then slide it in. So on an angle and slide Can it I in. Can I try it? Of course. I don't know. Enough. Okay. There. Okay. okay. All right. That's it. Boy, I never knew that. Okay. Was so a it's locked in here, right? Yes. You heard it snap. Oh. We're going to put that in here. I would have put it the other way. Okay, I just spun it because you need the bottom to like, that's probably, you're gonna turn this on. Mm -hmm. Oh, already? Okay. Yep. Okay, so now it's spinning. So now you're gonna take the cabbage. My heart is racing. And you're gonna put pieces of it in. Okay, and then you're gonna put that in there. There you go, oh! look at this. There you are. This is fun. Get in here. There you go. Get in here. Yeah, good. So we're gonna shut the machine now. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay. And we're going to wait for the blade to completely stop spinning, yeah. right? And we're going to open this, mm -hmm. and you see that in the inside? Mm -hmm. I mean, that looks incredible. Right? Okay, okay, now I get it. So I get it. We're going to take, if you would, please, mm -hmm. take this out. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. What's this for, anyway? For, this... for the shawarma. We need a fresh crunch okay. on top, okay? Yes, we do. Okay, so we have that in here. Mm -hmm. We're going to take the top out. Mm -hmm. 
All okay. Right, let's go. All right. So this is going to give you more of like a slice okay. of cabbage. Oh. I like this way better, personally, because mm -hmm. I like a lot of texture. Mm -hmm. As you can see in this bowl, it's kind of like confetti. I like that, actually. Perfect. We'll do one more little piece, mm -hmm. and then I think we'll be ready what to go. What did we do in the olden days before food processors? Oh, actually, you have some tongs there. Mm -hmm. I'm just put a little Yeah, just put a little bit of yours on that half. Mm -hmm. Come over to my way, the minced ca bit. cabbage way. There you go. Look at it, isn't that friendly? Perfect. Okay. Okay. Yum. We have one more thing, the star of the show. The chicken shawarma. Oh my gosh. Hello. Oh my God. Okay. Wow. Oh, look at this. Man. Smells delicious. Come to mama. Right. Take that okay. one. And I'll take yeah. this one. No, we never yeah. looked at it. Should I have been checking it? How do I know it's done? It's pretty foolproof the recipe when it comes to cooking. If you want, if you touch this piece right here, mm -hmm. see how it gives you like almost zero uh, resistance? Mm -hmm. That means that it's cooked. Mm -hmm. And same way you've been doing it. Just gonna load just it up. Just put it right in the middle. Yeah. Mm. Wow, that looks good. All right, perfect. So let's get this, and mm -hmm. can you grab the salad? Yes, ma'am. And we'll get to the table. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it what's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it, I know that it can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at five on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester, hey, who's this? For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. I can't believe we did this. I mean, I can believe you did this. You, I can't no, believe I did you this. You nailed it. You have to stop telling people that you know how to cook. Look at this spread. <laughs> how do you eat your chicken shawarma? How do you prepare okay, it? Okay, perfect. Okay, I'm going to show you. I want to see. So I can't help but make a sandwich because mm -hmm. how could I not? So I'm going to give you my okay, half, yes. okay? And then what I like to do is kind of mix some of these condiments. So oh. here we have harissa and zug. Mm. And here's the white sauce we made. Okay. So of course we have to put some white sauce on here. Come to me for those white sauce. Okay, I'm just gonna spread it out. What's yeah. zug? I didn't know what that That's, is. That's, that is, here you go. And then you wanna yeah. spread some of that in there. Mm -hmm. This is um, a, a cilantro, serrano, chilies, and cardamom. Mm. I wanna get some of these onions some of and stuff in there, right? Yum. Okay. And then, I love to eat with fresh herbs. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you some. Are you okay with minted cilantro? Do I just shove it in just there? Just shove it in there. Okay. And then, of course, we have to bring over our cabbage. Mm -hmm. Let me turn this around mm -hmm. so you could have your so half. I'll just do my. And I'll have mine, yeah. We'll just kind of sprinkle it's it in. The rip there. and dip, you know? I mean, it's beautiful. You know how to do that. And then I'm gonna take this. Come mm -hmm. Do you like spice? Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna do a little baby drizzle. How about okay. that? There. Yum. And then we'll have to do just a little. Just a little on I your was first bite, ask, you know what so I mean? Thank you. Yes, I want a little more. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Should we cheers? Cheers. Thank you so much. To an so amazing much. job. Thank yes, you. I love it. All right, let's, let's see. Mm. It's so good. It's so good. So good. Mm. Delicious. I'm going in for more. Mm. You ever put hummus in it? Of course. And that's the beauty of the sandwich. Like as you're eating, yeah. you kind of just like put a little bit more of something else on top. I know. Do you, don't mind me if I just lick my fingers here. It's supposed mm. to be messy. Drag the swirl. Mm -hmm. I love it. Mmm. For me, this is kind of fancy and fun food, but this is a classic family meal. Absolutely. The reason why I love like the Middle Eastern Mediterranean style of eating is because it's all of these little small plates, and you could really rip and dip and match. And no two flavors on this table don't go well together. There's something for everyone. Absolutely. Even my kids. 
Even the kids. <laughs> Delicious. Thank you so much. Mom said don't talk with your mouth full. But sometimes you can't help it. Mm -mm. I truly am. Thank you for showing me this. My pleasure. It was an honor to be cooking with you, and I'll do it anytime. You mastered all of the <laughs> food processor, your knife skills. I think you're going to nail it. Well, cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. I have been waiting for this interview patiently because um, I have always felt weirdly connected to you in so many different ways because I feel like our lives have these weird parallel paths and the more I learn about you, the more I feel it. And I just want to say I'm just, I've missed oh, you for so, that. for a long time. I'm just happy to sit with you. But how are you? You're in Nashville. What's happening? Okay, I'm good. Um, I'm in Nashville. We are doing a little bit of touring, mm -hmm. mostly on the weekends. Um, boys are 11 and 14. No, they're not. I am no, they're not. seriously not a cool mom anymore. I'm like, you just don't know, mom. You just don't, you don't know, mom. You don't get it. You don't get it. Can I remind you of something? You were here at the Today Show, downstairs in the dressing room, with your boys when they were little. And yeah. I went down there and I remembered thinking, watching you with your kids, I want something like that one day. Yes. And I'm telling you, uh, I have more friends. I'm just like, you can do this. Babies are coming in and they you don't get the wrong kids. It just doesn't happen that way. Mm. And my kids so clearly <laughs> Not only picked me, but picked each other. Mm. And man, what a cool honor. You know, I tell my kids all the time, I am so honored to be your mom. You know, I mean, I even told my 14 year old that last night because he hugged my parents as they were leaving oh. just involuntarily. My dad's 89 and my mom's 84. Mm. And I said, after they left, I said, I, I love you so much, but I just want to tell you what a cool person you are. Oh. Because not everybody just wants to volunteer a hug, you know, whether it's your grandparents, you know, an elderly, you're a teenager. He just got up and hugged him. And I was just like, man, that you're you're an awesome boy with a giant heart. And he's like, I know, mom. I know, mom. Wasn't it your like, mom, I know, I know. Cheryl, at the beginning? Because, I mean, I, I remembered thinking, like, I never spoke out loud the fact that I wanted children because I thought mm -hmm. I had missed my window. So I thought, yes. I hate to say something out loud that I know can't happen. So I didn't speak it. And one day I was walking with a girlfriend down the street and she said, well, me and you, we didn't want to have kids, you know, so it worked out great. And I said, well, I actually did. And I just yeah. thought I missed it. And I, I just remember saying it out loud and how weird that was to speak yeah. it and then to yeah. say it again. And it kind of like made it, it made it real. Sometimes I feel like even if you whisper your secret into the mirror, the bathroom mirror, at least yes. it gives it breath and life. Yeah. Did you always want kids? Did you did you talk about it when you were younger? Did you always think about it? I just never, I just never didn't think I would have kids. Yeah. You know, and I, I think I I was thinking of it in the context of family. Mm -hmm. I wasn't like it wasn't like I saw myself being pregnant. I couldn't mm -hmm. wait to experience having a baby inside of me. It wasn't so much that. It was much more about the wonder of getting to raise a person, you mm -hmm. know. Um and from a I mean obviously, as you know, Hoda, mm -hmm. I was 45 when I adopted my first one. I was 48 when I adopted my second one. I I had the gift of getting a lot of things out of my system before mm -hmm. I had my kids or before I got my kids. So there wasn't anything that I felt like I was missing. Mm. If I stayed home and something was going on, I just didn't feel like I was missing anything, that I wanted to be anywhere else. And that's that's a gift. I think if I was in my 20s and even early 30s trying to be in the world that I've mm -hmm. lived in for the last 28 years, I might have been pulled in a lot of different directions. But, you know, there's one there's one thing about a woman and the biological clock. You know, we get blamed a lot for the demises of relationships. Well, her biological clock or mm -hmm. uh, she wanted kids and I wasn't ready for that. And it's such a, I don't want to say a sexist thing, but it does feel like that, mm -hmm. you know. And I remember my last relationship crumbling largely because 
that is what I wanted. I didn't want to be somebody's girlfriend and raise their their kids. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't want to be a stepmom and not be made a wife and a mom. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, it's sort of like being in a relationship with someone, but being also the babysitter, but not being getting to be the real parent. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that did crumble that relationship. And when I came out of it, it was my mom and I came out of it and also had breast cancer and went through that. And it was my mom who said, why don't you just get a surrogate and get some sperm? And I mean, this is like yeah. Bernice Crow yeah. from Tiny Town in Missouri. I, my head is like exploding. Like, what did she just say? Like, just have my own babies? <laughs> what? But it was that. It was her saying, look, you know what? If you adopt, we you have a family around you who yes. will stand at the altar with you at baptism and say, we are his mm. community or her community. Mm. And that's what they did. And that's kind of what gave me the, you know, the life raft to not limit myself to that. Oh, you've got to be married. Mm-hmm. You've got to be stable. Uh, then you have kids. My story didn't lay out like that. But the story I was telling myself limited what I thought I could have until mm. somebody stepped in and said, wait a minute. Your story doesn't have to look like your mom and dad's story. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to look like the conventional family that you had. Fam- families look like all different things. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who's hey, this? You know what's interesting? You just you said something in the in the middle of that story that struck me too because um, I was diagnosed with breast cancer at the same time um, my relationship was falling apart. And what was weird about that moment when you just mentioned it, I had this weird feeling. Mm-hmm. But what I remember about it was it was kind of strange because I felt like I had two pains going on at the same time and I couldn't go down the rabbit hole on one. Like I was so angry at him and then I had to go in for my test and they were like, you need a mastectomy. And then I was so mad at the doctors and why me and I ate apples and ran in Central Park and what are you talking about? I was so mad. And then and then I was thinking about, but what about, oh, and him, you know, but it was almost like, and I kind of liken it to like having two kids and one kid's coloring on the wall and the other kid's spilling flour all over the floor and you can't like you you only have so much attention so you can't get super mad at that kid because you got this kid over here so you're just (laughs) so you're weirdly your grief is kind of lessened and I wondered in a weird way if that how I often wondered has did that help me in some strange way I couldn't I couldn't get so depressed on one thing because I had two things to worry about yes I you know uh well, I mean, not to analyze my mm-hmm. last relationship, and it was a public relationship. There were a lot of facets to it, mm-hmm. but it was a relationship that um, that I seemed to keep going back to. And I think when I got diagnosed with breast cancer, that was like, oh, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. I think we have to really look at this, and you have to put yourself first. And once I got that message, I really had to sit down and learn how to hold an emotion. Um, I remember my friend who I used to say was kind of psychic, but he said, no, everybody's intuitive. It's just whether you really want to know the truth. He had said to me, he's like, you know, uh, awaken, uh, 
emotions are the gateway to awakening. And I had not really understood that until I had to go through a real grieving process. I had to not do that thing that we got, we get so good at, which is, Oh, just don't think about it. Just yeah. stay busy. Just stay make yourself busy. busy. Don't stay dwell busy. in it. Yeah. Just, and that is the antithesis of what we need to do for healing. Um, you know, we need to actually sit with the pain, the anger, the grief, um, all of it that goes along with getting to the other side. Um, and, you know, the only way to get through it, plow through it and experience it. And so for me, I just embraced it. I said, I'm not going to make a record. I'm not going to pick up my guitar. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to journal. I'm actually going to sit and be wow. angry and be sad and be and grieve and all that. And when I came out of it, I just felt like, oh, okay, I remember now who I am. <sighs> and all these events, I think, kind of help us remember who we are. We get so far away from it sometimes with all the messaging that we put on ourselves about who we mm -hmm. are or we aren't. And um, it was, man, it was a real, it was a serious cleanup. Wow. I didn't realize. Clean no up on aisle seven. <laughs> no. Well, I, I love like no records and no journaling. That's interesting just to sit in the middle of it. Did you ever, I never, and this is probably not healthy. This is me. I, I never really had a follow-up conversation after it was over. That was the end. Um, and that's how yeah. I played it. Well, I mean, I think in some situations, um, I mean, man, I'll tell you what, I, I am blessed to have a wise mom, but she mm -hmm. said, no matter what you think you're going to get from that conversation, you're never going to get what you think. Mm. And I mean, that's just, that's part of, I guess, the end of a relationship. There's not generally closure. Mm -hmm unless you both are, I mean, that if, if you communicated that way, you might not have split. But in mm -hmm. my relationship, I was not ever going to get the kind of answer I thought I was gonna yeah, get. Yeah, that's interesting. I don't know if you're like this, Hoda, but I have measured myself for almost my whole life by my productivity, mm -hmm. and that's what gave me self-worth. Mm -hmm. And not just not just the quantity, but the quality. You know, mm -hmm. it couldn't be it couldn't be ten songs. It had to be ten great songs, mm -hmm. and they couldn't be t ten top two hundred songs. They had to be ten top ten songs. You know, mm -hmm. it's like it's exhausting. At, at a certain point, you, yeah. it's exhausting, and you wind up never feeling fulfilled. Mm -hmm. So, you know, sometimes in order to fill yourself, you have to like sit with it. Sit with it. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I know. It, it's like when you put a song out, they're like, well, when's the next one? You put an album out. When's the next one? You write a book. When's the next one? You're like, oh, my yeah. God, how about this one? How about if we sit with yeah. this one for one can second? We just, can we just look at this baby <laughs> right here? <laughs> look at this cute chubby baby. Oh. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon. And by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it what's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who's hey, this? Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. For breaking news in our changing world, 
Download the NBC News app. I was just thinking back to your the the infancy of your career, and I know that people look at you and think, you know, they see you, um, first of all, just, I, I watched you, I think, at Radio City. That was one of my final concerts before the world shut down, and I loved every second of it. But I was just thinking about, people probably think, well, that was, somehow it was easy for her. But I loved knowing that, and I think it was 1986, you were, pound in the pavement and they were like no darling no no not yeah. you nothing oh, no yeah. doors were opening and you were as you were talented so what was happening there well you know I look back on it and I think man I was so lucky to come up when I did and not come up now because yeah. now everything is so brand oriented and so mm -hmm. all about self-promotion but back in the old days back in the dark ages <laughs> um I moved from St. Louis where I was a school teacher and I thought, well, I was 25 or about, well, no, I was 24 mm -hmm. and I had a bunch of tapes and I thought, I'm just going to go out to LA and see what happens. And I got a Thomas guide and I found out where all the studios were and I took my tapes to every studio. And if I get into the studios and somebody will pick it up and listen to it and discover me, you know, and it, it was literally like an episode of Friends and, you know, slowly I wound up getting a little bit of work and then I overheard some backup singers talking about the Michael Jackson audition and then I crashed the Michael Jackson audition audition and I mean it just crashed the Michael funny. Jackson audition just yes. just even to say that out loud it's crazy yeah. and I think part of my what was in my favor was my naivete I mean mm -hmm. I just didn't ever think um I just thought well if, what's the worst thing that can happen sorry you can't come in you weren't recommended mm -hmm. well you know it just it's hard to explain, but all, all I would say is that what seemed like an overnight success, my first album didn't even come out until I was almost 30. Oh, really? So, yes. And 30, by all intents and purposes, in yeah. the rock and roll world, I mean, I'm old enough to be, at 30, <laughs> probably Olivia Rodrigo's mom, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I can remember... Uh, meeting Taylor Swift on an airplane mm -hmm. and she was literally a teenager and I was like old enough to be your mom. <laughs> um, so yeah. And I've been really lucky. Mm -hmm. I I've had now, mm -hmm. um, God, I hate to even say, say it, it. But I'm getting returned 60. So, um, let's just, I'll be 60 in February. Let's sit with that. So I've girl. had 30 amazing years. You know, I've had incredible, uh, an incredible journey and mm -hmm. I don't know that you can even have that kind of career anymore because the attention span is so shrunk mm -hmm. and everything is so fast and all about social media and here today and gone mm -hmm. tomorrow. I'm just, I feel lucky that I had those pound the pavement years where nobody would give me a record deal because I was a, a blue eyed soul singer is what uh -huh. they called it. Uh -huh. Back in the day when Madonna, I mean, it was all about Madonna yeah. and Paula Abdul and People are like, I, we don't know what to do with you. Yeah. Who are you? So, so wait, who, you, yeah. you, you said the word 60. Um, how did that, how, yeah, how did it. that feel coming off your tongue? How does, how do you, how do you sit with, with 60? How does that feel? You know, those little bumps you get on the side of your tongue that are like a little canker sore or whatever. That's what it feels like. <laughs> oh, um, no, I mean, yeah, I don't love it, but, um, <laughs> You know, I, I have to say, I'm I'm really at this point in my life. I'm I am happy. Um, I something really changed after the cancer episode yeah. and getting my kids. And uh, you know, if I if I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right mm. now. And that's a good place to be. You know, for mm. somebody who's always measured themselves by shucking and jiving mm -hmm. through you know life like look at me i can twirl i mm -hmm. can sing mm -hmm. i can play the bass and the piano mm -hmm. you know and to be able to say you know what i love my life mm. um it's a great place to be now what what has motherhood given you that um your work couldn't that relationships couldn't well i mean I, uh, well, motherhood has changed. It's 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 created a um, a barometer for sure. I mean, I don't make any decisions that aren't pretty well decided by virtue of what my kids have going mm -hmm. on. So, although that 
I'm sure irritates everyone around me. I, I don't plan anything without, like I've already been told by my 11 year old, he doesn't want to go on the tour this summer. Oh, he wants to stay home and play baseball and oh. you know, hang out with his friends. So now so, what do we do? Well, we're going to, and we got invited to play in Europe the first week of school. Ooh. I don't want to do that. Okay. So you're not so, doing. I mean, we're gonna. Oh. We we've been we've been learning the lesson of, first of all, compromise, and secondly, mm -hmm. uh, uh, f friendly, uh, friendly. Mm -hmm. What what is it? Not uh, tyranny, but um, <laughs> when you're the ruler of a of a country, this is what happens when uh, you're six. A dictator? You can't think what? of words. <laughs> uh, friendly dictatorship. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so if it doesn't work in the compromise, then there's the friendly dictatorship. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I I would say that I had to really, before I could be happy being a mom, I had to be happy. And hmm. that was the first thing. And then mm -hmm. being a mom has been the greatest, the greatest gift and the greatest occupation. I mean, I, I have full respect for moms mm -hmm. across the board. Mm -hmm. Single moms, working moms, even married moms. Mm -hmm. Being a mom is no joke. Mm -hmm. It's 24 hours a day. And unless you're going to let somebody else raise them, you are on call 24 hours a day. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon. And by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it what's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. We will meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Man, who's this? Do you have room for uh, another love in your life, do you think? I do. Um, do you already have that? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> okay. I wasn't sure. <laughs> um, I don't. I um, I mean, I don't want to say sadly. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm. our family is, is I mean, we, we're complete. My, 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 um, it's tricky now. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just. Yeah, tricky. sure. You date somebody and you and you pretty quickly decide how they might fit mm -hmm. or if they unequivocally, you wouldn't even let them near your kids. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, and truth be told, mm -hmm. I just don't feel like I'm missing it anymore. Yeah. I mean, I love, I love the idea of it and mm -hmm. I would love to be loved and to love, but my first loves are my boys and mm. whatever I bring in or whatever comes in, I just, I'm open. I'll just say that. Mm -hmm. I'm open. You're open. Um, yeah. When it came down to, you know, I, my, my girls were adopted too. They're four and two and um, I've, they know they're adopted. I've, obviously I've told yeah. them and yeah. I know more questions are coming as we go. And yeah. I, I guess I'm looking for a little advice because I don't really quite know. Like first, I thought should I volunteer information? I thought no, let me wait till they ask me. <laughs> I, mm -hmm. I that's there's such tricky conversations to have. How did you yeah. know how to navigate those waters? Well, I had two different situations with mm -hmm. my boys. I knew Wyatt's birth mom, mm -hmm. and I did not know Levi's mm -hmm. birth parents. Um. 
But what I did with Wyatt was I made his story. I made a book, the story mm. of Wyatt. And I had pictures of the day he was born. My mm -hmm. mom and dad were there and I got to take him home. He was four hours mm -hmm. old. And mm -hmm. so I had all these pictures and it explained who everybody was. And it talked about how, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd asked God to be a mom mm -hmm. and that I knew that God was going to take care of me and that if I was supposed to be a mom, I would be. And that lo and behold, God brought this, brought you into my life. And, um, but that he came through somebody else's tummy, but I got to be his forever mom, you know? Oh. Um, <laughs> so anyway, he, from a very early age, not only was not interested in it, didn't want to see it at all. Oh, okay. Um, and, and even really up until the age that he was able to understand it, well, actually, hmm. period. Um, mm -hmm. He's not wanted to see that book. He hasn't mm. been ready. He okay. he chose his life, and he didn't want to know about the rest of it. Mm -hmm. My uh, Levi is very, I mean, he's very pragmatic. Mm -hmm. There is nothing he will not say or ask. <laughs> um, if you want to know if you look fat in a pair of jeans, he will tell you. <laughs> Um, and he's right off the cuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Were my birth parents short? Because I really want to play basketball. <laughs> I mean, th these are the things that matter to him, you know. Um, he asks questions, um, mm -hmm. and he has the story of Levi as well. Mm -hmm. And he likes it. He doesn't want to look at it. But he's more, he's going to be my, he's going to be my, I'm going to go out and find him on my own. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and I've told both my boys, when you are ready, mm -hmm. You know, after when you become old enough, like eighteen, I'll help you. Mm -hmm. We'll go find them together, mm -hmm. and nothing will come between the way you and I love each other. Mm -hmm. But you have a lot of love, mm -hmm. so and you love people in a lot of different ways, and families look differently. Um, no, but neither one of them have asked me why their birth moms gave them away, mm -hmm. and some of those questions will be hard. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how you feel about it, but. I do have that fear of, okay, someday when I'm older, they go find their younger mm -hmm, mom mm -hmm. and suddenly I'm going to spend Christmas at mm -hmm, my mom and, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. or with my real brother. Mm -hmm. And I, I get emotional about it and I get yeah. scared, but you know what? It's, it's like I, uh, it's like I tell my, my dad when he's worrying, hmm. there's no point in worrying about it. It's not going to fix it. Yeah. You know, when you when you get there, you get there. So that's just the way I'm approaching it. I think yeah, that sounds healthy. And I like this, this sort of God's got this. It's sort of like, you know, because I, I, you know, I have those feelings, too. And I they don't they don't ask many questions now. They're they're super right. young, but they do know a lot of things. So, yeah, I just yeah. I, I literally some days I get this ouch in my in my stomach. I'm like, okay, yeah, I gotta be ready. Like, yeah. how's this, how's this gonna, how's this gonna go? What do they think when you're on stage? Are they wigged that you're up there killing it? Or do they think it's At early days? They didn't really understand it. Like mm -hmm. I've got videos of both the boys coming out in their PJs. <laughs> um, I had this, had this wonderful nanny who's now my assistant. Um, and they would always come say goodnight before they'd go to bed, like mm -hmm. at eight 30, you know, mm -hmm. and I'd just be getting started and, mm -hmm. Um, and they'd come out and sometimes they'd come out on stage in their PJs and do a little <laughs> jig or whatever. And they just seeing all those people, that's, you know, they, they didn't really understand what that meant. And then mm. when I, when I started making this last, the record before the last called be, be myself and I was making it during school hours, I would go pick them up and I'd bring them back to the studio and we'd work for another couple of hours. Mm -hmm. They got to be around during the making of that record and understand, oh, this isn't just something where she goes out on stage and mm -hmm. sings songs. She works like it's a workplace mm -hmm. and it's like serious work hours and mm -hmm. doing things over and over. And then they, they got interested in it and got to like learn about some of the engineering stuff. And then it became like, Oh, okay. So she's not just famous cause she has like mm -hmm. all I want to do or mm -hmm. <laughs> right. soak up the sun yeah. or the song from cars. <laughs> and that made a difference. But you know, now that they're older, you know, they'll come to the side of the stage and wave and then they'll go back and want to mm -hmm. get on their iPads. And mm -hmm. I'm just like, ah, ah, no, no, oh, no. My. <laughs> so they, they, they make money by helping out. Um, oh, is that they, how they do? They make $5 a gig for bringing out guitars. And la two summers ago when we were out with Phil Collins in Europe, yeah. about halfway through the gig, Levi's like, we're walking off stage and Levi's like, mom, can we negotiate a flat rate? $5 a gig doesn't <laughs> seem like very much. I'm like, are you kidding me? 
You're nine years old. <laughs> How do you know what a flat rate is? <laughs> How do you even get that? Wait, are they musical? Do they are are any, either of them yes, the music? They, they are. are. They are musical, but mm-hmm. um, uh, that you know they. I think part of it is they came in that way, but also they've been saturated and yeah. by osmosis they yeah. They are musical. Uh, Cheryl, I've thoroughly enjoyed our conversation. Thank you so much Hoda, for visiting I love you. I love you too. Come see let's me when you- Let's get our kids to marry each other. Oh my God, that Come would be on, perfect. let's do it. Yes. It's not that big of an age gap. Eight no. years and 10 years. Yes. I mean, I mean by the time they're adults, uh, you know. <laughs> okay, we'll have a date. All right, honey, good okay. seeing you. All right, it's good Take to care. see you too. You too. Thanks. Andy, good to see you, my friend. Hey, Willie. You are the number one brand ambassador for this show, Sunday Today. Well, because I love my mug. You've got the mug. I almost brought it because we are close to my house and I walked over and I was going to bring it. It's in the dishwasher. What's the past 18 months been like for you? The time with, you know what? The pandemic actually for me has been okay. Uh, I have been able to work during the entirety of the pandemic of which I feel very grateful. And then I've gotten to spend an inordinate amount of time with my son that I never would have uh, gotten. And that's been frankly incredible, especially as a single parent, to be able to really, I try to spend as much time obviously as possible with him, but I feel an extra weight on me as a single parent to really let him see that I'm around. As long as I've known you, you've talked publicly and privately about wanting to be a dad sometime down the road. Yeah. And now you are. Yeah. How has the reality been compared to those expectations? It's actually been an easy ride so far. I mean, it's been, you know what? It's been all right. I thought that it was going to be completely overwhelming. And I actually feel like he has been trying to make it easy on me a little bit. And he's just, he's a good guy. He's very nice. He's very Where's sweet. Daddy? He's starting, he's yes. becoming a three-nager. Is that the oh, term? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so that just started last weekend. And um, so that was interesting. We were supposed to have a movie night Friday night, and I was so excited about it. But he then started to show his <laughs> will and I had to take the movie away. And guess who was the real loser in that? Me. Because I was then screwed on a Friday night. I was like, what am I doing? Right, now you got two hours to fill. Exactly. I was very, I was actually more upset than him <laughs> that I took the movie night away. So I'm not sure what lesson was taught. What's he into, like, in terms of movies and what's his You know name? what? He has not watched much TV or movies just until this summer. And so what he's really into right now is Sesame Street. Great. Uh, which is great. And he, I let him watch it on the weekends. It's his treat. No TV during the week. And I will say, I screen an inordinate amount of Housewives, and he's always coming up to my desk while I'm watching. And I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> you are not watching this. You are not watching this. Um, he saw me grilling Erica Jane on a Housewives reunion <laughs> the other day. He's like, Daddy, Daddy. I'm like... Yes, but no. Yeah. So it sounds like you've, you guys have had all this bonding time, and, and being a, a single parent, like you say, has its challenges. Yes. How do you navigate that part of it? Um, just one day at a time, and luckily I have um, several jobs, but all of them allow me to be in and out of my home all day. So weirdly. I am almost always around for breakfast, lunch, and dinner with him. So that to me is a great a bit, that's a great amount of continuity for him where we get to see each other. Now, New York is thumping in a sense, Mm -hmm. and I'm anxious to be part of the thump. And so um, I think he's, I, I keep saying, and you know, my show is going back to live with an audience. So I keep saying, daddy's going to work, daddy's going to work. And so we brought him to the clubhouse last week because I wanted him to see what, that there was a place that was work. Right. And uh, he quite enjoyed it. I forgot that the 
shelves are basically all toys. Right. And he's like, this, this? He wanted to take, I'm like, that's taped down. You can't have that. It's not a toy. <laughs> Don't touch Julie Andrews' tea bag. Yes, that, he was trying there? to get to Julie Andrews' tea bag. No, 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 no. Funny that you say that, yes. That's Tamara's a... implant, he was trying to get to. <laughs> like, this is not a toy. This is... was in someone. Your parents are a big part of your private story, but also your public story, they where are. like they're on the show and the yeah. audience loves them. Yeah. They seem to be thoroughly enjoying this ride that you are on. They are, but the ride that they are most enjoying is the curveball that I threw them at 50 years old of giving them another grandchild. Yeah. Because this was the kid that no one saw coming. <laughs> Even as the years went on, I would say, you know, I, I still want to have a kid. And my mom would say, it's not happening. Like, really? Oh, okay. You're, gonna, you're flying to LA for a party right now. When are you going to have a kid? <laughs> so I proved them all wrong. And it's the great, one of the great joys of having my son is watching his relationship with his grandparents, who are um, well into their 80s and who FaceTime with him every night at dinner. Mm. And how lucky I feel that way too about my parents that yeah. your son will have a relationship with them. He'll know them. The grandparent-child yes. relationship is so magical. And I remember great times with my grandparents and sleeping over there. Mm -hmm. And they give your kids something that you can't. Uh, and it's just so exciting and sweet. That, that to me has been an incredible uh, side benefit from this entire journey. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it, I know that it can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at five on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. I've yes. been on Watch What Happens Live over Zoom. Remotely, yes. Remotely a couple of times. Yeah. So what was it like for you to, because we all experience this in one form or another, to do that show over Zoom because so much of that, anyone who's been in that yeah. clubhouse is the crackle of the back and forth. Right. It was weird. Uh, it was highly efficient, which I loved. Yeah. We are doing the show at 1.30 in the afternoon and we will be done at 1.55. And then you can go about your day. So it felt fake for a long time. And I was doing my own makeup to horrible results and really <laughs> not seeming to care for a very long time what I looked like going on television. I didn't monitor my, what I was putting out there. Too much, too little, everything, what was the problem? Yeah. Everything, didn't care. Just was like, once I did the show um, from my, uh, I was doing it from my office for a big chunk of time and had left the Grateful Dead play for the entire show. And they called me after the show and said, we're detecting music. I said, oh, I left the Grateful Dead channel on for the whole show. They're like, we're gonna hope no one notices. And I believe no one noticed. So there was a, I mean, my show is already homemade, yeah. as it were, but it was real, um, 
scotch tape. I think I, I sort of sympathize with that. We all got a little too comfortable with our yeah. home studios. Yes. What we're wearing on the bottom. Oh, what we look like. I stopped. Yeah. Who was wearing anything on the bottom? Not a lot. Yeah, no. What'd you do? Shorts and flip flops? I wore, I was barefoot. I wore, yeah. um, I mean, I did it out in the Hamptons for four months. And I was in, I, I would jump in the pool and then be in a wet bathing <laughs> suit. I'm gonna skip the makeup today. It's fine. Like I mean, yeah. I was a runaway train. So I was a runaway train. When you're in that studio, you've created such a space. What is the magic of that show to you? Why do you think it's taken off the way it has? I think people respond to the authenticity of the show. I think that God knows I screw up every episode. The audience, maybe you know, the audience is drinking. The guests are drinking. It's a loose atmosphere. It's Cape Justine! And thank you, Jimmy, for the shots. If we spill a cake on the floor, it's about the cake. We follow the action. And I think people respond to that idea that they don't know what's going to happen. The guests can wind up hating each other. Mm -hmm. We've had guests who literally, you can see them on the air that they hate each other. And the audience then starts, you know, chiming right, in and right. it's fun. You know what else is true about that show? It's a little like Howard Stern, where by stepping into that studio, you're agreeing to something. You are submitting to my tomfoolery yeah. and my messiness. And you are now going, you are on the witness stand right. about your life. Right. And so, here we are. And the yes. thing that where a publicist on another show would say you can't ask about that right. does not seem to apply on your show. Well, we don't pre-interview our guests, right. which is great. Yeah. So then we can't, <laughs> you know, it's less trouble to get into. But I mean, there are times when people come in and say, listen, yeah. I don't want to talk about the fact that I hate right. X, Y, or Z. But one of the genius moves you have is you can put it off on the audience. So and so, yes. right? Yes. Well, it's true. Yeah. We try. Listen, I don't want anyone to leave unhappy. Yeah. So casting is huge. You often yes. put me on with a housewife. Yes. We like. And it's great. High and low. Yeah. We like um, big and tall, <laughs> small and big. I don't know. You know, we like. Yes. Yeah. It's amazing. It's yeah. such. It's it's the most fun you can have on TV. Getting the audience back was a big deal. And now that the audience back, now that the audience is back and the guests are there, it's what we're supposed yeah. to be doing. Yeah. I'm like, oh, this is why we do it. So I'm very happy to be back. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon. And by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Speaking Thank of you. fun... 
Let's talk about glitter every day. 365 quotes from women I love. Yes. What's the idea behind it? The idea is just basically in the title, I want to, this is a book that you can look at every day, have a little bit of, little splash of glitter thrown on you every day. I love, women have shaped me for my entire life. From my mom, to mentors, to the housewives, to divas and icons. And so this is a quote a day by a woman that I love. I love a lot of women and they've said a lot of things. And talk about high and low. We've got Madonna to Malala, Dorinda Medley to Kamala Harris. I mean, it's all over the place. It's funny you say that. I'm gonna jump ahead because I thought this captured you perfectly. On one page, we have a quote from Anne Frank. Yes. As I turn the page, Countess Luann. Thank you. That's Andy Cohen in a nutshell. It absolutely is. Two women that I respect immensely and who have different things to offer the culture, <laughs> but valid nonetheless, <laughs> Willie. This is the world that we live in, by the way. We lead off the book with a quote from the great Evelyn Cohen. My mom. Her quote is, get a hold of yourself, Andy. Yes. What was the context of that? Well, that is a quote that my mom has used over the years that renders me slapped in the face. Get a hold of yourself, Andy. And I will quite <laughs> literally get a hold of myself and come back to earth. It is what, she, it's in her arsenal of, you're a runaway train, you got to get it together, basically. It's a very simple sentiment from Emil, Evelyn Cohen, but one that I respond to. It feels like it's something you've heard for a long time. I have. Yeah. I have. Yeah. She doesn't, she'll, she whips it out uh, when, when she needs it. So Evelyn Cohen's the biggest star in this book. I she think is. we agree. Yes. Some huge names in here. Dolly Parton, Madonna. Um, What's the thrust of the kind of person you want? How, like, how did you put I this just, list together? You know what? It's just women I love. Yeah. Strong, powerful women with something to say. Uh, so that could be anyone that has touched me in my life. I mean, I have a quote from my friend Liza in there that I love that is only go, oh no, when you're a hammer, everything's a nail. Mm. So there are quotes in here to live by and there are quotes in here to laugh by. Yes. And I put a little commentary on every page of my own relationship with the woman, with the women or the quote or um, just some thought I'm having. Yeah, I mean, I, I just love the, I, there's too many to list, but you go from Jack Hay to Jill Biden on yes, the same page, you know? absolutely. Like that's Jack the beauty. Jack Hay to Jill Biden. That's the beauty. Two of our beacons of inspiration. There you go. Yes. There you go. Yeah. Um, and is it true that Hoda Kotb gave you the idea for this book, or at least she encouraged you to write it? Hodes didn't just give me the idea. I basically just stole the <laughs> idea from her. She had come out with two quote a day books. Yep. And I was, I, I happened to be co-hosting with her during the um, publication of both books, mm -hmm. I believe. So I spent a fair amount of time chilling Hode's books. And I thought to myself, what if I did one of these but put my own spin on it? Um, so then kind of halfway through writing it, I FaceTimed her and said, I need to make sure this is okay <laughs> with you. Like, do you have another one of these coming out? Because I do maybe in the fall, is this okay? She's like, write your book, babe, write your book. There's a couple of great quotes from Hoda in there. Yeah, Hoda's yeah. in the book. Yes, of course she A nice tribute, and you mentioned her in the acknowledgments. Yes, so. well, I mean, again. Central figure. She inspired this book completely. <laughs> who in this book would you like to have on Watch What Happens Live who you've not yet had on Watch who What Happens Live? Who in that book wouldn't I like to have you've on Watch What Happens You've had some of them, Live? a lot of them. Yes, no, I mean, I think uh, Michelle Obama. Michelle Obama has done every show but mine. Now what's going on Michelle with that? Michelle Obama uh, did The Chew when it was on. I think Michelle Obama has been on CSI. I'm not kidding. Really? I think so, or NCIS or something like that. Truly, <laughs> there almost isn't a show 
that she hasn't been on except mine. So maybe I should feel good about that. Okay, so Michelle is the big get. She's she's one of them. Who I else mean, is on there? Madonna's never been on. I've she interviewed been Madonna. On? She's never been in the clubhouse. Oh. Uh, no, she. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. If I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. It's the little moments that are the transforming moments. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh, I could apply that. I want to stop for a second. <laughs> From season two, I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now? What it all means for you for an hour every day? It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson now, weekdays at five on NBC News Now. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Yeah. So many. Because Madonna is a, a North Star for you, is, is that fair to say? Yes, yeah, she is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, I love my ladies. So um, let's talk about Housewives. Okay. 15 years. You know what? Can you believe Just that? Just watched season 16 premiere of Orange County. And how do we feel? It's fantastic. Yeah. They got the assignment. Yeah. Let's go back to like 2005 when you're cooking this up. Yeah. You never could have imagined what it was going to become, but what did you well, think it would be back then? Well, in the best, at, when it started, it seemed like a sociological time capsule of this group of women who were kind of nouveau riche in a gated community in Orange County who spoke to their children in a way that none of us had ever seen and were, they were just different. And it was while Desperate Housewives was airing, which right. is how we got the name Real Housewives because these were the real housewives. And it was a play on real because of course, much of them wasn't. Now, season two of the Housewives of Orange County, we found that Gina Keogh was getting separated. And that was when I leaned in and said, oh my God, this is now a soap opera. Mm -hmm. This is Knott's Landing. And right. this could go on forever. Did I think I would be sitting with you 16 years later talking about it? Absolutely not. Am I thrilled by it? Yes. They have given me and many others inordinate amounts of pleasure. I would not be here where I am today without them. And that's one of the reasons why I, I thought it was important to include them in this book and why it is a mix of high and low, because there are things that they've said that really ring true to me and a lot of other people that I think are worthy of a closer look. And I don't think we can even call it a guilty pleasure anymore. So many it's people not, watch it's it a pleasure. across. It's yes. just a pleasure for yes. a lot of people across the spectrum. Yes. So how has the show, Andy, evolved over the years? So you got Orange County, here comes New York and right. New Jersey, and you've grown and shown different people and different cultures and different cities. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, it has evolved. We have an, I have another book out on my imprint called Not All Diamonds and Rosé, which is a oral history of the Real Housewives in its entirety. It comes out wow. in like two weeks. And it's great. And you see the evolution of it. I think there was an evolution when, I think there was a moment where people started to really realize they were on TV and they could make a moment. And there are right. some moments that were made that were incredible on television that we thought, how authentic is it that this woman is taking her leg off in Le Cirque and throwing it to make a point? Here, go ahead. Go ahead, Heather. Oh, take it. Oh my God. They 
maybe not an incredible finale for season, I think, <laughs> six of New York Housewives. Uh -huh. <laughs> but we didn't bring Aviva back the next year because we kind of thought, where do we go from here? Right. You've thrown your leg in Le Cirque. Where does the story take us that we could possibly go? We've been to the so mountaintop. If we've yeah. been to the mountaintop. So, uh, so I think that we try to we try to lean into the real, and we try to you know go away from the performative. But this is a show now, all these years later, where people know they're on television. We're in the middle of two incredible um, moments. You know, Beverly Hills, something happened with Erica Girardi, one of our uh, housewives, before, you know, as the cameras were rolling, her husband was implicated in a horrible right. crime. And so we're watching that unfold now and watching the women relate to that and react to that. And you've expanded your audience by the cities you've chosen and the yes. groups of women you've chosen, right? It's true. I mean, Salt Lake City, man. Yeah. Who would have thought? Another curveball. Mormon housewives, look into it. <laughs> uh, people want to know, the, uh, to the extent you can talk about it, behind the scenes, I'm sure it must just be, your phone is texts and phone calls from various housewives who have an issue with something that was in the show, how they were portrayed. How do you manage this universe that you've created? I think that my senses have been dulled over the years a bit. Maybe I'm a little more, you know, I used to look at my dad and think, how does he exist amidst the chaos, the cacophony of this group of overmodulated loud talkers that <laughs> exists in my nuclear family, myself, my mother, and my sister. But, you know, there's something to be said. There's actually a great quote from Ruth Bader Ginsburg in the book. Uh, where she said, sometimes we all have to be a little bit deaf and we choose to hear what we want to hear. And I thought that was such a great quote because it's like, you know, you, some things matter that you hear, some things don't. Maybe, you know, some critiques that you get, tune it out. Uh, something that someone's yelling about, you think, you know what, they're going to be over it tomorrow. I mean, I'm not going to take this on. Right. So, um, RBG. So it's a little bit of psychiatrist, a little social work, a little of that. Yeah. Right? Just hear him out and yeah. let it flush its way through the system. Yeah. There are some moments, though, where you can't do that. And I'm thinking about the reunions. Yes. Because you are physically in that room. Absolutely. And sometimes under assault. Yes, that is true. Um, but I control the narrative. I mean, we're in the midst of, um, I really had my toughest interview yet with the whole Erica Girardi. Uh, Beverly Hills, it's unfolding right now. Unprecedented four-part reunion that's happening right now yep. because there were that many questions that needed to be answered by Erica. Isn't it amazing that you've created this universe where it's not just the show itself, but there have to be interviews and debriefs. Yes. There's a news cycle about there the shows this, you've created. It's incredible. I opened the New York Post and I am amazed at the amount of coverage yeah. that these women get. It's really dominant. People who don't know, you started in journalism yes. at CBS News. I you remain were a, in journalism. You do remain in journalism, yes. as you just described. Yes. But you were a hard news producer. I was. Working at CBS News, you interned there, you wrote yes. for your school paper at BU. Yeah. <laughs> Are you sometimes, do you ever take a minute and say, wow, Look how my life has turned. I love that part of my life, but look how things worked I do. out. I think it evolved as TV news evolved. I mean, TV news became a little softer over the years. And so I think people started to become more interested in personalities. And I think that the definition of what is news has evolved as well. So. I walk into a Housewives reunion and my attitude is, this is news for a lot of people. I mean- I gotta it, get answers from these people. meaningless, of course, but <laughs> it's a form of news nonetheless. <laughs> it truly affects no one's daily life. Uh, and yet- As like the Facebook here 
Linus might. Right. Uh, but uh, I, I recognize that it is important to people, and people want me to do a good job. Thanks, Andy. Thanks, Willie. Great to see you. Happy anniversary. <laughs> Thank you. Folks, welcome to a terrific Tuesday edition of Pop Star Plus. On the show today, we're getting ready for WrestleMania this weekend with WWE superstar Bianca Belair. Then we're going to switch gears from the ring to somewhere over the rainbow. Our third hour friends had a very inspiring conversation for Women's History Month with Judy Garland's granddaughter. So we'll have that for you. And later, we're celebrating the man, the myth, the legend, Christopher Walken. But first, here are today's Pop Star headlines. First up, our friend, this is great. Quest Love starts off Pop Start for all gr a great reason. Can't forget that following that infamous slapping incident at the Oscars on Sunday, Amir Thompson, a.k.a. Quest Love, won the Academy Award for Best Documentary, Summer of Soul, earning him his first Oscar and nomination. Quest celebrated by DJing at Beyonce and Jay-Z's Oscar party, then hopping on a plane late night back to NYC to make it back in time for Monday's Tonight Show wow. taping. Of course, wow. Quest Love there greeted by the staff, <laughs> filling the studio 6B uh, to celebrate his milestone achievement. And today we are sending him a huge congrats from all of us here in Studio 1A. Yeah. Very yes. cool. Uh -huh. Next up, Uncle Al, the proud family, louder and prouder. Last month, the hit animated series returned, continuing the next chapter of Penny Proud's hijinks and adventures. But what would a proud family reboot be without the master <laughs> of mischief himself, Mr. Al Roker? <laughs> We've got an exclusive sneak peek at Uncle Al's big return in this week's brand new episode. Uh-uh, here is a tip, Roker. Colored glasses don't make you look younger. <laughs> oh, very funny. I expect better from you, Penny. Especially after I helped you out. Helped me out? When? Oh, come on. You remember? That PB and CC thing. Man, I wish you guys were old enough to take care of yourselves. Consider it done. Hey, Penny. Anyway, I got a big promotion out of that. I'm working directly with the big guy downstairs. Don't you mean upstairs? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> it almost it's, looks like what you're wearing oh right my now. Yeah. It is awesome. It, it is what he's like wearing right now. Well, there you go. Yeah, you it, planned it, that up perfectly. They, they, they do such a terrific job. I, there are kids or young adults who come up to me now and say, they didn't know I did the, tea, the, did the weather. Oh, yeah, they, they, they just knew me from the Proud Family. <laughs> right. oh, that's so cool. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Very oh. nice. Well, congrats. That looks fun. The next episode of The Proud Family, Loud and Prouder, starts streaming on Disney Plus tomorrow. So be sure and check that out. Next up, Taylor Swift. Cue this year's graduation theme, Swift Song 22. The Grammy-winning chart-topping superstar about to add yet another title to her name, Doctor of Fine Arts. On Monday, New York University announced that Swift's going to receive the honorary degree at this year's graduation, where she's also been named as one of the ceremony's speakers after the pandemic postponed NYU's comm commencement for all the classes. 2020 and 2021, this year's ceremony will act as sort of a super graduation. Wow. They'll honor all three of those graduating classes, and the soon-to-be Dr. Swift, that's funny, will deliver her addre address at Yankee Stadium on May 18th. Wow. You know, there's, Congrats to there's the a course at NYU on Taylor Swift oh, that, has a sure. wait, okay. yeah, that has a waiting list a mile long. People can't get what into it. What do they do in that? I don't know, but it's wow. really it's popular. So they write songs about yeah. ex-boyfriends. Cool. And if you get a big oh. break, you just shake it off. All right, and now a little bit uh, a little bit more for you, hence the plus in Popstar Plus. A couple more headlines. First up, John Travolta, the beloved actor, turned out to be probably the biggest winner at the Academy Awards, and he wasn't even nominated. John and his son, Ben, left the show on Sunday night as the proud owners of a brand new puppy. Apparently, Little Mac and Cheese made an appearance at the show during Betty White's In Memoriam tribute, and Travolta connected with Jamie Lee Curtis backstage and walked away with a brand new addition to the family, Curtis calling the good news a perfect tribute 
to the late, great Betty White. That is one lucky dog. All right, next up, Keith Urban, the country music superstar, is channeling his inner pop diva on Monday. Urban sharing this amazing Adele cover. But I can't bring myself to swim when I am drowning in this silence. Baby, let me go. There you go. In a post on Instagram, Keith called Adele's easy on me lyrics, quote, divinely timed. Not bad there. Finally, Tom Hanks, the Hollywood icon, is out in Pittsburgh. He's shooting his next movie. And while spending some time on the East Coast, you may have noticed that Tom Hanks has been pulling some double duty. That's right. He's working the wedding circuit. Last week, the award-winning actor crashed one bride's pre-ceremony photo shoot, leaving her with probably the best candid photos for her wedding album she could ever imagine. And now he's taking things one step further. Tom Hanks recently answering the call to a officiate a stranger's wedding. The bride, Chris Paznik of Bellevue, Pennsylvania, knew Hanks was an ordained minister, reached out to him just to see if he would do the honors for her big day. And lo and behold, the big screen star came through. Wedding photographer Grace Ruiz told NBC News Hanks was so personable, funny, and kind during the entire wedding, calling it an unforgettable experience. It looks like if you're getting married and you find yourself in the Pittsburgh area, America's sweetheart Tom Hanks is available for all of your wedding needs. Those are your Pop Star Plus headlines. Coming up next, WWE superstar Bianca Belair sizes up the competition at this weekend's big WrestleMania. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon. And by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it, I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at five on NBC News Now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. And welcome back to Pop Star Plus. WWE superstar Bianca Belair bested Sasha Banks at last year's WrestleMania, the first black women to face each other in the night's main event. Well, Belair is going to be back in the ring this weekend for WrestleMania 38, and she spoke to us about how she's feeling ahead of her big match. WrestleMania 37, I was able to be a part of a very unprecedented moment. Sasha Banks and I, we became the first two black females to ever main event WrestleMania. You could see the emotion in both women's faces. To be a part of that moment uh, is everything to me. And to be a part of a moment where it was more than just being about me or being about Sasha Banks, it was more than just being about us. It was about inspiring the world, inspiring women, men, boys, girls. It doesn't matter, it transcends across across our race, religion, genders, it doesn't matter. It was able to touch everyone, and it's a moment that's going to go down and live in history forever. Smackdown Women's Champion, Bianca Belair! You know, the response to Sasha Banks and I made even at WrestleMania, it was all positive. Even going into it, we had fans creating hashtags uh, for us to main event WrestleMania. So the fans wanted it. So to be able to give the fans what they wanted and be able to deliver and have people still talking about that match, knowing that that, that match was so much bigger than the both of us and it in affected people and impacted people in such a positive way. That's what this is all about. We also won an ESPY off of that match. 
So to be able to be recognized in the world of sports um, off of a match where I main event with, with Sasha Banks is everything. You know, coming off of WrestleMania uh, last year, main eventing with Sasha Banks, having our fans back for the first time since the pandemic had happened and walking out of SmackDown as champion, um, you know, I, I'm riding off of that going into WrestleMania 38. I'll be competing against Becky Lynch for the Raw Women's Championship on April 2nd in Dallas, Texas. And, um, you know, I made history last year, so I'm just looking to go back to back at WrestleMania and uh, walk out as champion, but this time walk out as Raw Women's Champion this year. Becky Lynch came into SummerSlam and beat me in 26 seconds, and she took the title from me, and she's had that title ever since. Uh, she's Raw Women's Champion now, and we've been going back and forth. Um, you know, for me, this, this is my redemption story going into WrestleMania 38. I have yet to actually perform uh, in front of a full full WrestleMania crowd. So this will be the first year that I'm able to do that uh, in a title match with Becky Lynch. So uh, our fans are everything. And it's going to be really exciting to be uh, at WrestleMania in front of thousands and thousands and thousands of people. See, WrestleMania, um, it's amazing now because it's now for two nights. It'll be April 2nd and April 3rd. I'll be on April 2nd with Becky Lynch and Ronda Rousey and Charlotte Flair. They'll be on as well going for the SmackDown Women's Championship. So the the night is going to be full of some crazy, amazing um, matches. I'm really interested to see what's going to happen with, with Charlotte Flair and Ronda Rousey. Things are really heating up with them. Um, they have they've had history. Ever, you know, they were they were a part of the very first main uh, main event of WrestleMania that, that the women were a part of. So they have a lot of history there. Ronda Rousey with 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 her um, extensive background and, and Charlotte Flair with her being being the champion multiple times. She's the most decorated um, woman in WWE history. Uh, it's 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 going to be interesting. I'm not sure who's going to come out on top. I think that it's going to be a brutal match. And said she's going to get hers here tonight at SummerSlam. Bianca Belair showed up. So I call myself the EST of WWE. That means that I am the strongest, the fastest, the roughest, the toughest, the quickest, the greatest, the best. Anything that good that ends in EST, that's what I am. And I'm all about just striving to be the absolute best B E S T version of myself my very first time with an entrance I honestly just didn't know what to do with my hands so this is where the, I do like a little bounce when I come out Bianca Belair took out uh, Selena Vega and Carmella last night teaching them a lesson after the assault from two weeks ago led by of course her opponent Sasha Banks during the contract signing and then my braid is just right there. And I just like to twirl and skip and bounce to the ring. So that's really how it all came about. It's just a huge part of who I am. It's a part of, um, of who Bianca Belair is. And it's right there. And I like to just have fun and bounce and skip to the ring. And, and I like to whip my hair up in the air. So it's, it's kind of just a part of who I am. And it just happened naturally. My braid is my superpower. And it, it definitely can be used as, as a weapon. But the key word is only when it's necessary. My number one rule is do not touch my hair. But if you do, I will use it. Becky Lynch going after the hair yet again. But a continued strategy from Becky Lynch all throughout this match. Wow, man, going to oh, oh, my goodness. Times. The grief. The braid um, initially was just as a way for me to stand out. And one day I was in a match and you know, the, the girls, the first thing they always try to do is go to my hair and pull my hair. And it's like, how can I get them to stop touching my hair? And so one day in a match, I threw it at a girl. It made this huge loud noise. The crowd went crazy. And I was able to capitalize off of that in the ring. And in that moment I realized, whoa, this is, this is definitely, can definitely be used to my advantage and not my disadvantage. And big thanks to Bianca. And of course, more importantly, good luck this weekend. We should mention that you can catch WrestleMania from the WWE on Peacock. And just ahead, the legacy of Hollywood legend Judy Garland, but this time through the eyes of her granddaughter. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. 
What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. And we're back here on Popstar Plus for Women's History Month. We're telling incredible stories of remarkable women through conversations with their granddaughters. Today's focus, the talented Judy Garland, who starred, of course, as Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz, and her granddaughter told our Dylan Dreyer about the influence Miss Garland had on her life. We're back with our series, Generations Today, celebrating Women's History Month by sharing the stories of some legendary women as told by their grandchildren. It's such a fun way to learn more about these women. And this morning, we are taking a look back at a Hollywood icon. Judy Garland would have turned 100 this year. Her granddaughter, v Vanessa O'Neill, never had the chance to meet the legendary actress, but her grandmother's legacy lives on through her family. I'm in awe, even being her own granddaughter. I'm so impressed and blown away that this four foot 11 little woman has this humongous voice. Toto, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. Being Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz is her most legendary role, but for Judy Garland, being a grandmother may have been the role she most desired. Her excitement was seen on the Today Show back in 1967 as she sat with her two children, Lorna and Joe. Looking forward to being a grandmother? That's going to happen one of these can't days. Can't wait. Really? I can't wait. I'll let, I want her to have a baby immediately, and then she can see the baby for only 25 minutes, and I'll be a babysitter. Makes me tear up a little just hearing that, because obviously we didn't get to see her. In Vanessa O'Neill's home, Judy is known as Triple G, as she would now be a great grandma to Vanessa's two young sons. You're a great singer. To the world, Judy is an icon of Hollywood's golden era, starring in more than 31 films like A Star is Born, Easter Parade with Fred Astaire. Right, left, right, good. And Meet Me in St. Louis. She was also a Broadway legend and an acclaimed recording artist who was the first woman to win a Grammy for Album of the Year. It's really incredible how she paved the way for so many other women down the line. I always say that I have such strong women in my family who aren't afraid to speak up and be their most authentic self. And I know that that sometimes isn't probably easy, but I hope to pass that along to my kids. For Vanessa's family, Judy's ruby slippers are some big shoes to fill. When did it register with you that your grandmother was somebody truly special? I must have been about five or six, and my mom was performing in Vegas, and I saw, you know, like, my grandma on top of the slot machines, like, turning, <laughs> like a huge <laughs> bottle of her. Vanessa credits her mother, actress and singer Lorna Luft, with keeping her grandmother's memory alive. I watched my mom perform so much of my grandmother's music, you know, live and sitting in the wings. Lorna. Lorna wrote about life with Judy in her memoir, Me and My Shadows, 1998, saying of Judy, everything I know about being a good mother to my children, I learned from her. What traits would you say have, have been passed down through the generations to you? I definitely think 
our sense of humor. <laughs> it's it's a huge, huge part of our personality to make things fun and funny, but also to get through hard times. I like to laugh. I like to have a bag of popcorn go on a roller coaster now and then. But behind the lights and stage, Judy was often troubled and struggled with addiction. Did your mom ever talk with you about the bad sides or the downsides that fortunately your grandmother went through? Not until I got a little bit like of age. I do have the addiction gene myself. I'm seven years sober. And I really do feel like it's a genetic trait in my family. Vanessa's grandmother suffered with her own condition in silence. Judy Garland died of a drug overdose in 1969 at the young age of 47. My grandma was living in a time where there really wasn't much help. Mm -hmm. You know, there wasn't AA and these programs and people didn't really know what, what addiction was. Vanessa bypassed show business altogether and today is a personal trainer and nutrition coach. The health and wellness industry has helped me so much, not only with my physical health and body image, but my mental health, 1,000%. Her home is in Southern California with her husband, Patrick, their five-year-old son, Logan, and a brand new baby boy, Kieran, who was just born somewhere under the rainbow. A sign Vanessa says that Judy was there. You could see behind the little bassinet that my son was in, Sure enough, just a big rainbow right there. And it really makes you feel like, hey, like you are sending me a sign. Thank you. That's amazing. Don't you get chills Incredible. seeing the rainbow? I have the chills right now. It doesn't rain much in San Diego. To get a rainbow is, is hard to do. Yeah. Um, the, the baby she just had two weeks ago um, is the fourth great-grandchild for Judy. Vanessa's brother, Jesse, also has two children. And, and by the way, um, you know, in that piece, you'll notice that Liza Minnelli is yep. her aunt. Yeah. And we actually just saw her on stage with Lady Gaga there um, at the Oscars. So the, the first time we've seen her in quite some time. So yes. just greatness runs in the family. Pretty cool. Still to come, we got a great throwback visit with Hollywood icon Christopher Walken next on Popstar Plus. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon. And by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Welcome back, everybody. Christopher Walken turns 79 years young this week. The Deer Hunter, Catch Me If You Can, Hairspray. He's had so many memorable and great roles, and we'd like to share his visit here to today, back in 1992. In a career that now stretches over 30 years, Christopher Walken has earned a reputation as an actor who's good at being bad. An Oscar winner with over 100 stage and screen roles to his credit, he's cast as a villain once again this summer, a guy named Max Schreck. Boys to oppose Batman in the season's biggest movie. Christopher Walken, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Um, Max Shrek, as opposed to Catwoman, as opposed to Penguin, is, is not a character with whom readers of Batman comics might be familiar. Who is the guy? Max Shrek is uh, the name of the actor who played the, uh, the vampire in the original Dracula movie, Nos Nosferatu. Nosferatu. And, um, He's named after him, though it doesn't yeah. have anything to do with him. He's, he's a uh, businessman. He, he's the uh, owner and uh, 
CEO of Shrek's department store, which is the Macy's, Bloomingdale's, Alexander's of Gotham City. He's the, one of the last men on earth to wear spats on a regular basis. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very lavish production, um, it, it, but essentially it is a cartoon. Did you approach it as serious drama, or did you try to add a cartoon quality to Max Shrek? Odd as it may seem, Max, we're both perceived as monsters. In a show like this, where there are wigs and costumes and big sets and special effects and so forth, of course it takes it out of a, uh, a kind of naturalistic uh, context. Frankly, I feel it's a bum rap. I'm a businessman. Tough, yes. Shrewd, okay. But that does not make me a monster. Don't embarrass yourself, Max. I know all about you. But the feeling of being in it is much, uh, much more of, of theater, really, for me. I've worked a lot in the theater. Get the picture. What is that supposed to hypnotize me? No, just give you a splitting headache. Warner Brothers is is hoping and and betting that this film not only does box office, huge box office for the year, but rivals. The, the greatest returns of all time. Um, what are your own expectations for? I, in my, I've, I've been doing it a long time, and I try to avoid uh, expectations. Um, just hope for the best. My feeling about uh, um, acting in movies is that what I hope for is that the m movie that I just did is going to get me another one. Mm. And, uh, Were you a fan of the first one? Yes, I did. I liked it a lot. I was noting when I got here that uh, that I was looking forward to this interview because I, I've admired your work a long time, and we were supposed to talk uh, uh, before another movie of yours, and it, it never materialized. I, I was um, your reputation is that you don't enjoy these kinds of things. Is it accurate? You mean interviews? Yeah. Well, it's it's uh, I, I am more comfortable uh, doing uh, other people's dialogue. And um, there's something about knowing your lines and knowing what you're thinking and having a character to play. Yeah. I don't think that's unusual for actors. Um, um, an actor is someone who, uh, who enjoys um, uh, uh, embodying another person, I suppose. Do you find it strange that people may be as fascinated with Christopher Walken as they might be with any character you play? I, the, I think the characters I play are probably more colorful than I am. I noted at the top that, that, that over the years you've, you've developed this, this aura of, of playing guys who are, if not evil, certainly slightly off-center. Yeah. Um, is, is that something you've cultivated or has it just kind of happened that way? I think that movies are, are so expensive to make that it, it just makes sense from a producer's angle, a kind of marketplace way, that if you have demonstrated that you can do something uh, effectively, that you'll be asked to do it again. I think that's why that happens. And, and I'm lucky, really, to have uh, 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 any kind of ball rolling. If it's, if it's villains and twisted people, then fine, you know, so long as I'm working. It is nice to break it up sometimes and, and do... Um, to do different kinds of things. I like to do romantic things and um, uh, maybe a picture with a woman and jokes and happy ending and all that. A final note, um, it, it's also clear from your track record that you're a guy who quickly moves from one project to another, that you'll mm. do a movie, and if there's no movie to do, then you'll do a play. Yeah. Why do you work so much? Well, because uh, I really like uh, to work. And uh, for me, it's the best time that I have uh, Working is, is uh, the best time I have. When I'm not working, I'm always worrying about what's next and trying to get another thing. I'm on the phone trying to do things. Uh, I, I don't have hobbies. Uh, I don't like to travel much. As an actor, I get to travel uh, to fascinating places all over the world and actually get to live there. I lived in Venice uh, a year ago for three months. You don't get to do that on vacation. So when I have time off, I, I'm not inclined to get on a plane and go somewhere. I, I have a house in the country, and I tend to stay there and, uh, and, uh, and uh, think about what to do next. Mm -hmm. As noted, I'm an admirer. Christopher Walken, thank you. Thanks. And a big happy early birthday to Mr. Christopher Walken. Thanks for being with us for another Pop Star Plus. Tomorrow, we've got the scoop on Starstruck on HBO Max. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.
air today all day, fam. Glad you're with us. It is Friday. Or Friday. As you would say. Uh, you're watching our little digital show today in 30. Uh, after we closed out the week with another big show, starting with some news that will hopefully bring drivers some relief at the pump. That decision to release 180 million barrels of oil from the nation's emergency reserve. But the question is, is it going to be enough? The busy summer driving season just around the corner. We've got a full report on that. All right, then imagine being able to take drive through orders from anywhere in the world. Vicki Wynn is here to show us the new technology that allows restaurant workers to do that very thing. An exclusive look into the future of fast food coming up. And then college basketball's biggest weekend of the year is set to get underway. The excitement of the final four so who better to break it all down the final days of march madness than our resident basketball fat uh, fanatic steve cornack okay and then we, we want you to start off this friday by feeling uplifted so we are bringing you just the good news stories that will leave you smiling all weekend long that is all coming up on this episode of today, today in 30. 30. NBC's Tom Costello is here with the details. Hi, Tom. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. So, you know, gas prices had already been on the rise because of post-pandemic economic surging, inflation, Russia's invasion of Ukraine, and the sanctions on Russian oil. And now the White House hoping to offset some of that by tapping into the nation's petroleum reserves in a big way, but also wanting to take steps to pave the way for a more fuel-efficient future. Even with prices at the pump slowly starting to decline, the cost of fuel is still taking a major toll on our collective wallets. Now the administration will make a record tap into the nation's strategic petroleum reserve, releasing 1 million barrels per day, 180 million over the next six months. The bottom line is if we want lower gas prices, we need to have a more oil supply right now. Right now, the national average for a gallon of unleaded is hovering around $4.22, even higher in some places like California, nearly $6 a gallon, up more than 60 cents nationally from last month, a dollar 35 higher from last year. As the nation prepares to switch to costlier summer grade gasoline next month, experts say tapping the reserves could provide some relief with a major caveat. And the national average could spend most of the summer under $4 a gallon so long as the situation between Russia and Ukraine does not significantly escalate. For delivery drivers like Osman Malcolm in Chicago, where it's 484 a gallon, relief cannot come soon enough. These gas prices are way out of control. Malcolm says he spends about 12 hours a day in his car just to make enough tips to offset the price of filling up every day. As soon as I open the car door, I just spent $120. And, and it's, it's sad because it, it really hurts. The White House also calling on Congress to make companies sitting on unused wells on public lands either use those resources or pay a fine. It's likely to face opposition in Washington and from corporations. The administration likely to roll out new fuel economy standards today, requiring 2026 20, model year vehicles to get an average of 49 miles to the gallon, nearly 10 miles per gallon better than last year's models. The president also invoking the Defense Production Act to encourage domestic production of materials used in electric vehicle batteries. But weaning off fossil fuels will take time. Until then, your best bet may be slowing down. Even a five or 10 mile an hour decrease in speed can boost fuel efficiency anywhere from 10 to 20 percent. Every cent matters. Again, tapping the reserves is a temporary fix. To put things into perspective, the U.S. consumes about 20 million barrels a day. We're talking about adding a million barrels a day to that mm. supply right now. Kind of a drop in the bucket, but the, the yeah. drop matters. Um, how soon might we see this? Is this one of these things that will take months and months to see the effects of? Just 10 minutes ago, I got off the phone with an analyst that I've talked to for 20 years, an oil analyst. He says we are already starting to see prices drop, but the president's talking about a 35 cent a per gallon drop he thinks more like 10 cents a gallon nationally 20 cents in california he says the big variable is that russian oil wow. because as long as that's not on the market then you got to make up for it somehow some way and the prices are set globally they are all. set globally yeah. yeah tom thank you very much meanwhile this friday some fallout fallout growing from that unexpected drama at the Oscars. Yeah, Chris Rock was back on the comedy stage overnight. We're also seeing some new video of the moment he was slapped by Will Smith amid conflicting reports about what exactly happened after that stunning moment. NBC national correspondent Miguel Almaguer is on the story again for us. Hi, Miguel. Good morning. 
Savannah, good morning. As the review of that Oscar slaps heats up in Los Angeles, here in Boston, Chris Rock took to the stage again overnight for a pair of sold out shows. And while he's still not sharing a lot of details, there is new drama in this saga. Overnight, Chris Rock in the spotlight again at his latest round of shows in Boston. According to People magazine, the comedian shut down an audience member who cursed Will Smith last night. Overall, Rock has largely avoided talking about the slap by Smith, sticking to jokes and video emerging from his first show after the incident. How was your weekend? It comes amid conflicting reports over how the shocking incident was handled by the Academy. Will Smith just smacked out of me. A day after the Board of Governors said in a statement, Mr. Smith was asked to leave the ceremony and refused. A source at the award show tells NBC News the official decision came from one of the show's producers, who ultimately asked the actor to stay. They were saying, you know, this is battery was the word they used in that moment. Oscar broadcast producer Will Packer telling ABC News he was there when LAPD officers asked Chris Rock about pressing charges. They said, uh, we will go get him. We are prepared. We're prepared to get him right now. You can press charges. We can arrest him. And they said, you know, would you like us to take any action? And he said, no. He said, no. Quoting unnamed sources, Variety says Academy leaders met briefly with an apologetic Will Smith on Zoom this week. The Academy would not confirm that report. The board says disciplinary proceedings against Smith have begun. The superstar issued a statement apologizing to Rock, but has not responded to our request for comment. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. With every moment dissected on social media, this new TikTok video revealing another view of Jada Pinkett Smith reacting to the incident. And a separate TikTok video showing the moments after the incident as the broadcast moved on, Rock reacting. Rock has not addressed the controversy in detail. Hey Chris, you ready for tonight? Instead, choosing to stick with his long planned show. What happened? Meanwhile, Miguel, there are new details emerging this morning about how the Academy considered responding to the incident on that very night. What do you know about that TikTok? That's right, Savannah. Will Packer told ABC News he's the Oscar producer that Will Smith was not removed from the Oscars because that is not what Chris Rock wanted. Of course, he's in the middle of a lot of controversy right now. We know the Academy says they asked Will Smith to leave, but he refused. Will Packer today saying he did not ask Will Smith to leave the ceremony again because that's not what Chris Rock wanted. Savannah. All right, Miguel Almaguer, thank you. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world, because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news...